All right, here we go. DJ Academics. Welcome Hello. back to Vlad TV. Come on, man. I'm back again, man. Yeah, the two most controversial figures in the hip-hop media space. Shoot, yeah. I, I mean, you know, at this point, I don't aim to be controversial. I feel like controversy um, kind of either follows anything I say, do, or I'm just always into it with somebody, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been I mean, chilling recently, though. I think so. You've been chilling? You've been chilling? I think so. Well, you got, I know you have the whole dossier <laughs> since the last time we've been here. I don't know if I've been chilling that much. But, nah, actually, I have not been chilling. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're still been getting into it. Well, first of all, you just did a legendary little Dirk interview. Mm, yeah. Congrats. Nah, thank you for that. Congrats. You actually called me right when it happened. Yeah. And uh, for a while now, how long has it been since, uh, since Dirk said what he said about me on his last album? It was like maybe two years ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, a couple of years ago, little Dirk could actually mention me in one of his songs. He goes, I don't fuck with Vlad. Yeah, yeah. And... I never really knew what it was about because we had some people in common. And every time I asked them to reach out just so we could have a conversation about it, they're like, he doesn't want to talk about it. So I guess sometime around the interview, and I don't know if it actually came out on tape, you guys actually talked about the situation, right? Yeah, yeah, Because, you know, in, in reality, you know, a lot of people give you a bad, a bad rap because it, it's, I know, I know about the piling on, um, like, you know, philosophy where if everyone says Vlad's the police or Vlad is bad, sometimes somebody won't even know you. Or sometimes people will have a good relationship or a good experience with you and just say the same shit. Mm -hmm. So I knew he said that. Like, we've had conversations about, especially other people who've said stuff about you. And I just wanted to get some clarification. I'm like, man, why you don't like Vlad? Because it, 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 we're all in the media. You know what I mean? You, you have your way of asking questions, getting interviews, but we're all kind of there trying to get entertaining content. People love your content. You got one of the biggest channels pretty much in media. So I asked him and... I thought it was nothing behind it, but, but but he actually confirmed. He said, no, no, it's a reason. He said, yeah. the reason is I did an interview with Vlad, and there was a part of the interview I had mentioned um, my, the upcoming birth of uh, of my child, and that's what was with India. Yeah. And he said, I, apparently he had asked you to take it out, Yeah. and he said you had told him, yo, I'm gonna, I got you. I'm going to take it out. Right. Interview comes out. That part wasn't taken out. A lot of people take that really sensitive, too, you know what I mean? And I, I know, like, it, I remember that was, like, the— he mentioned that like before we even got started and we did a four hour interview. So I, I was thinking to myself, he was so uncut. I wouldn't want anything that was accidentally not taken out. And I don't think you did it maliciously. You could tell me the story. Well, yeah, I remember that interview. It was actually the last interview that we did. And let me just preface this by saying I have been supportive of Dirk since the very beginning. We have actually done like three interviews, three mm. or four interviews over the years. Um, you know, I always mention how we interview Dirk wanted me. Yeah, no, absolutely, no, absolutely. We we've hung out before. You know, there's the whole Maserati story that, that I say. Really? <laughs> yeah, I remember I pulled up on him in the Maserati. Everyone always mentions this because I mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah, you know, but but honestly, you pulled up on Dirk. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, I pulled up on Dirk. It, it, we were in Hollywood. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay at yeah. the time, you know, like like you know, we would communicate every so often. It's like we were close friends or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it was like, yo, he very would actually cordial relationship. very cordial. Like he would actually say things on Twitter and then, and then at me so I would pick it up and make a story about it. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. early on. Okay. Early on. And look, and he ended up blowing up and doing really well. And look, I, I specifically remember this part of the interview and he asked me to take it out and I asked my staff to take it out. But when you have a bigger company yeah. and there's multiple layers, you know, it's like me, then there's a the manager, then there's the video editor, then there's the writers. It's like multiple people are in the process and along the way, something got mixed up and this part came out. And as soon as I found out that it was not taken out, we took it down right away. Mm -hmm. So I think from his point of view, I think he thinks that like I did it on purpose to mm -hmm. try to get some views, but I just, but, but that wasn't the case. But, but saying that, I am still the president of the company and I just want to personally apologize to Dirk and India because I know when it comes to children, this is a very important thing and it's a permanent thing. And announcing the birth of your child or the gender of your child, I know is very important. And I think that by us accidentally doing that, that took away from, you know, yeah. the, the grandeur of the whole thing. So I'm sorry. I, I, I'm i very sorry that this happened. I think that's big. I didn't even think you were going to apologize. Oh, no, I, man. I, I thought you were going to be like, well, it's probably just miscommunication. Like, No, man, no, I'm sorry. Point. I'm sorry. I understand how important family is. And I know that when it comes to family and when it comes – to affecting someone that's close to you, whether it's your wife or your child's mother 
or your child or your mother or your father or your sibling, that relationship is a permanent relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? A friendship or a business associate is temporary most of the time, right? It's, we could be friends or business associates and then the next day we can never talk to each other again. You know, like me and Dirk have never talked to each other again. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that when it comes to these types of situations, um, a priority is set. I mean, he's still with India. So yeah. him him doing another interview with me or whatever, she's going to look at him and go like, is this, is this the motherfucker who, yeah, 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 who yeah. messed up our gender reveal? Like, you you cool with him again? So yeah, and, so and, and, and I think you know again because that's so close to home for him. Yeah, he might think you know like j just being in media and, and I'm a little you know I'm I'm a few steps removed in the sense of you know I, I wasn't in that situation nor nor am I in this household. Like if if I knew the gender of somebody's baby, that really is not gonna really gain me much. You know what I mean? So it's like right. it's, it's not like like oh Vlad like deliberately leaked this to gain, like, I'm pretty sure it didn't gain much, if anything. You know no, I, mean? I, don't, so, I don't think it did anything, and, and we took the video down right away. Yeah. As soon as it hit my radar, I'm like, yo, to take that down. Mm. You know, and then I reached out to the PR company. I forgot what the name of the PR company that he was working at the time. Um, Something Treats. Um, Audible Treats. Audible Treats. Audible yeah. Treats, yeah. You know, and I, I'm like, yo, I'm really sorry. Like, you know, my bad. Like, it, it didn't get a lot of views. It's, it's like, we're not like a... I don't know, like People Magazine, where it's like, oh, you know, here's the first picture of so and so's baby. This is not who we are, you know. I've, I've, at that point, I had a long, you know, successful business relationship with Dirk, and for it to end that way, um, I, I felt bad. And, and once I knew that this is the reason, because I thought it might have been something else, because there's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it could be a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But when, when you told me that that's the reason, and he felt that I violated his trust, it's like. I understand, and I'm sorry. One thing I'll say, though, um, even communicating with him more as the last few months has been going on, um, he's a very reasonable guy, though. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, again, I, I think, obviously, that rubbed him the wrong way, but who knows? He probably will see this and probably be like, you know what? All right, you know, at, at least I got an apology for it as a man. Like, um, w w one thing I've realized about him is that as much as you hear the raps and it might sound ignorant or the whatever, like you, you might have a typecast about He's Dirk. He's not like that in person. Dirk is is a very logical, like yeah. shrewd yeah. operator. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think honestly he'll respect that. Listen, I genuinely liked him as a person. Like I said, we we got to hang out a little bit off camera. And um, you know, I was really one of the ones that was pushing and rooting for him before really any of the other bigger media outlets. Mm. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I, but I totally understand his point of view. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's people out there that have said things about my family that I'm never going to talk to again because of what they said about my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and it, because I don't want to have a conversation with my family that I'm cool with this person, even though they said what they said. Yeah, no, it makes you sense. You see what I'm saying? No, it makes it's sense. like because they have the priority. I will never have remotely in a, a level of importance in his life than India. Yeah. Even if they break up. Yeah. Because they have a child together. Yep. Right? So so I, I totally understand. And if Dirk hates me for the rest of his life, and if India hates me for the rest of his, you know, for the rest of her life, I can understand why. And I just have to accept that. You know what I'm saying? Because because I understand the 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 level of it, but honestly, I, I am very sorry, and it was not done on purpose. And you know, as you know, as you know, because I remember I was listening to his interview in the morning. He was saying how he had to fire a whole bunch of people, and mm -hmm. people were stealing from him. He wasn't realizing he didn't have good enough credit to buy a car because mm -hmm. he wasn't, you know, in the business of following his finances. Man, you're talking about a, this. This happened like a long time ago. Like I think it was maybe six, seven years ago. Um, the company didn't have the level of organization that it does now yeah. you know it was like a bunch of people that no longer work for me that were you know not paying attention to stuff and you know we didn't have Probably a, like pretty fractured and like you yeah, know, things get, yeah. Get we didn't have we didn't have the same type of system we didn't have the same back-end organization and so forth but regardless i'm still the president and it's still my responsibility so so i take full responsibility but if he wants an explanation why it happened, this is why it happened. And it definitely wasn't purposeful. Hey, by the way, um, I'm going to tell you why I respect, like, even you doing that here now. Because I think in the media game, accountability is, it's, it's really, 
it's like a tough pill to swallow for most. Mm -hmm. It's easy to always just kind of be like, like, for example, say you get a story wrong, right? And like, rather than saying, hey, listen, you know, I should have done more research. The easiest thing to say is, well, I seen him post it. <laughs> or I seen like, right. well, we only posted it because we felt they verified it. Well, you got it wrong. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I think, you know, we're not perfect. So we're, we are going to make mistakes. My thing, you know, especially after watching that Travis Rudolph's case, but I've been thinking about accountability a lot, man. Like we got to have accountability for, for a lot of stuff. And, you know, what you just said, exercise is accountability. You know what I mean? Again, you know, messed up. Again, you could have passed the buck to say, yeah, we had a guy who, you know, he was a shitty editor. You know, I tell him what to do. He don't do it. But at the end of the day, why you didn't review his edits? I'm the boss. Why did you, you're supposed to green light the edits yes. if, or put somebody there to green light it before it goes up. Again, maybe you didn't have that at that time. You could just easily pass the buck or you're the boss, man. You got to, you got to, like, listen, I, I had those conversations with I, Adam too. You know, sometimes I think Adam, because he's scaling up and there was a point, I think he gets it now. There was a point where like, you know, people would say to him like, hey, well, why did this even happen or, or get through or whatever the case is? And I think for a point, he, there was an acceptable answer that he used to give to say, well, it wasn't on my desk. These are other people that work here that are making these decisions. But it's like, well, they all, their decisions roll up under you. So we're coming right. at you. We're not we're not going to them. We're coming at you. This is your platform. This is this is, you know, um, your name is ingrained into the brand. So, you know, again, it's all about accountability, man. And and I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, he'll see this and, you know, shoot, even at least start a dialogue. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't, I, I could tell that you've already um, you're receptive to the to the fact that, hey, listen, not everything people could, um, you know, just easily forgive and be like, hey, let's go on to the next. I get it. And like I said, if he if he holds me accountable and if he's mad at me about this for the rest of his life, I understand why he's mad yeah. because. Family, children, that's more important than anything. It's mm -hmm. more important than these songs. It's more important than these interviews. It's more important than this money. It's more important than your house or, or your jewelry or your car or, or whatever, clout or whatever else. Like, th this, is, this is the real. Like, you know what I mean? We're talking about, like, the actual really important things of human existence. Yeah. You, you see right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I, I understand. I have family myself. So, so it's like, I, I get it. When you told me, I'm like, oh, so that's the real reason? I get it. I, I actually feel bad yeah. about it. And that's why you say, and it's not like he sat there and tore me apart and right. He just said, I don't fuck with Vlad and threw up the middle finger. And yeah. that's that, you know I mean? Lots of people have gotten it way worse from Dirk yeah. than yeah, I trust have. Me. Trust me, man. Trust me. <laughs> well, you know, he didn't talk about my dead father. You yeah, know, yeah, talk nice. about, <laughs> nah, nah, you know, uh, like, smoking nah. a Leonard Lebovny pack. Yeah, he kept <laughs> you know? to, again, for me, it was just more, I'm glad he just at least, he had a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know I know people who don't like me have no reason. And and it's like, yeah. well, every, they'll say some dumb shit like, well, every time I see a, a Twitter video of you, which, okay, let's think about even that in, in, in a sense. If you're seeing a video that's meant to go viral about me, we know what type of platform Twitter seems to be a lot of times. Maybe it's not going to be a favorable video about me. It might not. It might be something that's very unflattering. Mm -hmm. Did you ever give my content a chance to really get what I'm trying to say or my, my views in context, maybe not. So like you're, you're formulating your opinion based on a whole people that whether they have, they're setting their opinions, but they're already just putting out content to say, let's keep hating this guy. So anytime I meet somebody who says, Hey, I don't like you, but I have reasons. At least that's a basis to talk about. If there's something that may be a misunderstanding or maybe, maybe I didn't mess up on something. You know what I mean? Again, we're human. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, uh, you know, further on in the interview, he talks about how he hates rats because a rat sent his father and I guess his uncle to prison. Mm, yeah. Right. Which is which is deep. Once again, we're talking about the, the whole family thing. The one thing about this, though, you know, that struck me a little bit. And like I said, Dirk, Dirk is a very smart, intelligent guy. You know what I mean? And I understand the whole hating the whole concept of ratting because if you are doing crimes with somebody and you get caught and you push the blame to someone else in order to get less time yourself, then that's a, dis that's a despicable act, right? Dirk, Dirk was one of the first people who explained um, quote unquote snitching in a way that it felt so personal that it didn't feel like somebody trying to 
cosplay or just say what they believe the streets like i like i felt when he was telling me that i felt that it was his childhood like almost crying out to say like my father was in there he literally says he's had to grow up around women yeah. he said that took my father away from my life yeah. and i could say it, it was all hurt I could, him saying that was yeah. all hurt and that that made me realize i'm like shit this is not just a guy who wants to seem like he's tough or street saying this. This is a guy who he feels this type of action has ripped apart his life. And he also continued a little further when he was like, it's like it was a reflection of this is why I kind of am who I am. And this is kind of why I, I, I landed in certain circumstances because my father wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, if I was him, I would, I would fucking hate rats too. You know what I mean? Like that's so personal. It's like it, it, it's it's like it felt like it's like a judge who had had a had like a niece die by a drunk driver. You walk in that judge court anytime with a DUI case, <laughs> you, you're getting the hammer thrown at you. Right. It is what it is, but it's so personal to that person. You know what I mean? And and that makes sense. Dirk is one of the only people because usually people talk about it from they're just trying to seem tough. Like yeah, nah, man, I was I, I would have kept the solid. So. And great, that's a great talking point if you want to be street or whatever. But but it's rare that you see somebody that says, nah, this shit ripped apart my family. I mean, something similar happened to Boosie. That's part of Boosie's, I know. Uh, you I know, know, that's part of Boosie's rationale. His, I think, uncle or or something had had a similar situation that also someone told on him, which he ended yeah. up on death row, which yeah, he yeah, ended yeah, up yeah. beating. So I just want to say this, and this is something that Dirk may or may not you know, start to realize as he starts to get older and so forth. But I understand the rat part of it. And that that did play a role in the incarceration of his father and his uncle. But you also have to take one step back and say, well, what was your father and uncle role in terms of the illegal activities mm. that they were probably doing? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. me personally, I don't care about rats in terms of my own life. Because I don't do anything illegal. Right. So if I have rats around me who are who tell on people, I don't feel they could hurt me because tell on me for what? I pay my taxes. I don't I don't rob people. I don't shoot people. I don't beat people up. I don't steal from people. I don't scam. You know, the IRS isn't after me. Like I, I do everything by the book because and I haven't always done this. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like like. There's this, you know, I, I bought a kilo of cocaine back in the day oh, and, and I could have ended up doing years yeah, yeah. and years of prison over it. You know what I'm saying? But if, if someone told me on me over that kilo, yes, I would be mad at the person who told on me, but then I'm the one who bought the kilo. I mean, I was talking about this the other day, like that was probably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Literally the stupidest thing I've ever done to buy a kilo for $17,000 when I had money and I was... Oh, you were really missing 17.5. Yeah, I was, I was 17. <laughs> and then I got ripped off for it. You know what I'm saying? But so it's kind of like you you have to uh, you have to take into account the ratting part. I get it. But you also have to say my dad was, you know, you need something to rat on, right? I don't think Dirk is there. And, and I don't know if he'll get there anytime soon. Um, I think if you listen to him talk about his childhood, like he he's he's even still, I think his, his father's having a life sentence, right? So like he's his dad is out, huh? His dad is out. Is he? I thought yeah. his dad was, was doing life sentences. No, hold on. Yeah, yeah, his dad is out. What, what? What? Well, here's the thing, but still, like, he's developed these relationships with these people that are already incarcerated. I, I think it takes a, a level of separation where he could step back to be like, well, let's peel the layers back a little bit to see why you even got incarcerated, regardless of a snitch or not. You know, maybe you weren't living right. I think he's not there yet of realizing that maybe some of the actions that led, led to prison for his family members were actions that just inherent. I think he's about to cross that, that bridge now because now he's, he's, he's starting to like, you know, you see him with the mayor, he's starting to realize, he even said it about people he used to have around him. He's like, hey, listen, if you guys, he's had, he had to cut some of the people off yeah, from him because he's like, yo, I want to go link with the mayor. If you don't understand that, that's a mentality thing. There's right. certain people that would be like, yo, yo, that's kind of like working with the police linking with the mayor. Right. right? That's how some people think. Yeah. And I think for him, he was just like, nah, like if, if I'm going to make change, I got to talk to the mayor. What are you talking about? 
So I think he's mentally kind of growing up. And I think that's why, you know, I think the theme of the album, like, you know, I think he definitely made this album to try to get, try to get like, you know, um, acknowledged on a bigger level, especially like maybe even a Grammy look. But Almost Healed is a is a really thematic album where somebody who comes from Chicago who who's seen the, I used to cover Dirk. This is from 2011 on. I remember first time Dirk's manager reached out to me. It was my first contact with him. And it was like, hey, listen, man, they didn't know nothing about a PR company, nothing like that back then. They were like, yo, why don't you ever cover some of the positive stuff he does? Like, yo, we just did a book bag giveaway to center. I said, we don't know. I said, as you guys get further in the industry, you're going to realize it's on you guys to let people know that. You have a PR company. They're going to put that out. They're going to see these good things you're doing because we don't know. Like, we're not with you as you're traveling. Less than a week after that, his manager gets killed. Wow, I didn't know that. Yes. Who, who, what was the manager's name? Um, remember? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. But he got killed at like a like a food store um, in Chicago. And I remember, like, I'm, I kid you not. And, and, and well, you, it probably happened to you a lot in the sense of you're talking to one person and then the next day they're gone. Like, that shit kind of, I remember just kind of like going back to our conversation. I'm like, I'm like, this guy's just gone. You know what I mean? I, I think his name was, what is it? It's like O or something like that. I can't remember what his name was, um, but it was the first manager. And um, from there on, I'm like, I remember watching even Dirk and he put up a post, but I, but I was like, yo, if this guy is with you every day and he just dies just like that and you still got to continue, you don't get no time to mourn, that shit got to be killing you. That's why in the interview, I even asked him, I said, well, when do you get time to mourn, man? I seen him lose... I don't know that my sequence of events might be fucked up, but I remember covering when his cousin got killed at the mall. Nooski. Yeah. Right? Then, yo, he lost his brother. He lost also Vaughn. Like, his brother got killed yeah. in a club. Shout out to D-Thing. Me and him actually, like, around the time that me and Dirk were cool, me and D-Thing were actually in communication. Really? And everything else like that. Yeah. And he was he was a cool-ass dude, man. Like, he, he was just, like, just had this good energy about him. I wonder how Dirk, well, I asked him in the interview, and he, said, he says he really puts everything on the mat. You know, he's, he's, he's more spiritual than people even knew. Mm -hmm. But I always wondered, I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you. I, after a while, I'll probably say, fuck this rap shit. Like, yo, I just want to get away. Or it would just, like, it's no way I could continue with regular scheduled programming. Like, man, I, I lost my, my grandmother to old age, and that shit fucked me up. Imagine just losing people who you are with all the time, your brother. Like, I always wondered, I'm like, yo, when does he get time to heal and mourn? I mean, look, it's just the work has to continue and you have responsibilities. I lost my dad a few years ago and I still have to go to work. I still have interviews. I still have a staff. I still it's, have a family. It's different, I, violence, I still have... it's different if it's violence and your music is also kind of in the middle of the violence too. Like he, he also admitted, he also admitted some in that interview, which I don't know if people caught because I asked him if he felt guilty about maybe sometimes, maybe if his if music didn't stoke, maybe stoke a fire or maybe set stuff off, you know, um, in motion that could have resulted in somebody getting hurt, especially when it comes back home and it's close to him. And and he acknowledged it was like, it, it, it's something that he's thought about. And, and even hearing him discuss that was, was a, was a man, you know, obviously not a boy, he's, he's he's a grown man at this point, and he's still going through these range of emotions to to kind of still deal with how does he express himself versus stay authentic, but also not completely get lost in this world of just like violence and revenge killing, because that's a lot what Chicago is. So, you know, um, I give him a lot of credit, and um, I, th I think that interview was just about growth, man, you know? I mean, listen, at this point, Dirk is rich. Yeah. Or even wealthy, you know, depending on how, how you he look at it. Money. Yeah, he's got some real money. And with that real money comes more exposure. Uh, you're around different types of people. You're around, you know, the people that you look up to and admire, you actually get to meet as equals, right? He's talked about meeting Jay-Z and everything else like that. Yo, and, and you look at how these people operate and you have to internalize it to a certain type of way because he kept saying throughout the interview, he's like, one wrong tweet, one wrong line, and everything could end. You saw it with Kanye. One tweet made him lose hundreds of millions of dollars. One tweet. And then, of course, all the doubling yeah. down afterwards. But really, it was the tweet, right? Yeah. 
one tweet. The DEFCON 3 on Jews. Like, one tweet. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if, like, even Ye get having, like, a little comeback, though. Which I, I always told people, I'm like, what Ye did is 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 palpable to, it's just, just a severe career ender, man. But I did say if it's anyone who could still have a finding or or coming back to grace moment, like Kanye just always seems to survive. Like, yes, did he fumble the bag? 100%. But even now, you, you see Adidas kind of trying to work with him. I don't know what it is about well, Ye. Well, Adidas is getting rid of the old inventory. They're not I really working I think their grandfather is a new shit, man. Like, yeah. Well, I, I think with Kanye, he has a fam, he has a, Die hard fan base that will continue to support his music and buy his sneakers and everything else like that. I think what Kanye lost in the process was the ability to work with the large corporations. Because mm-hmm. I think at this point, every major corporation is going to look at him and say, it's not worth the trouble. Right? Because clearly this person's mentally unstable. And although we could have these really productive meetings and sign our contracts and everyone's on the same page, he could end up having a bad day. You know, he could not see his kids that day yeah. and suddenly he'll pull out his phone and all hell will break loose. And I, it, it won't matter what the ramifications are, which he's proven, proven time and time again that he doesn't care. Because, you know, well before the whole Adidas situation and the, and the Nazi situation, he canceled uh, his entire world tour on stage. And everyone's yeah, like, oh, he's just joking. Like oh, OK, now he's just tripping. He canceled the show. But he really canceled his entire world tour. And think about how many people were affected by this. Of course. Like literally thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, people that bought tickets, the venues, the, the staff, the this, the that. He is prone to just say, fuck the world. I'm going to burn it all down because I'm feeling emotional today. But that's why I tell people. Like, I have, a, I have one of my homeboys, right? He's been fired from, like, 20 jobs. He, he always get 21. I'm, t- I'm serious. Like, he always get another job. Right. You, you get fired once, and you got to, and, like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, oh, they got to do a little background check on you. You never get another job. Because they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we fired the guy for stealing from the Who fucking. Who really does background <laughs> checks, though, like that? I, but, no, but, but, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows that one guy who fuck three strikes. Or, like, he gets chances on t- top of chances. Mm-hmm. I always say, like, when it comes to, like, say, a Kanye or even I even said to said about Dave Chappelle um, to a certain extent, people sh- can't follow those guys. Those guys are unicorns, and a lot of times their bad behavior actually, if if, if it's not ignored, sometimes it's rewarded. You get what I mean? If it's anybody else, you're done. It's over. So that's why you, those those guys are they're not of the mold. You know, um, to be honest, if anybody does what Kanye does, you never see them on a Hollywood screen again. You know what I mean? It didn't happen to, was it Mel Gibson or am I tweaking? Mel Gibson's Mel Gibson. still doing movies, though. But I it's not, not on the same. Oh, yes. No, he's really? still, yeah, he's still doing more like B movies at this point. He's not doing his movies Braveheart. movies go straight to Tubi, man. <laughs> like, his shit is, that shit Right, no, it's not, to- you know, I mean, listen, Michael Jai White is a regular show, a regular guest on my show. He did a movie with Mel Gibson recently, and I told him about all the, the N-word stuff and whatever. He goes, I should well, go to Peacock, man. I ain't going to lie to you, man. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, but he goes, well, I mean, but he made a point. He goes, well. You know, how many older, I mean, because Bell Gibson's like in his 60s, he goes, how many older actors are still like A-level? I have to challenge you to think of another person in his his, his age. peer group, right, whose career did not go down at a certain point with age and everything else. So, you know, some of that is just absolutely natural because really, if you're making money for the studio, you're, they don't care. There's no real blacklisting, in my opinion. Yeah, your your reputation be, can be hurt to some degree, but it's it's like I think he's more than likely doing what he normally would. I mean, you know, it's, it's like the the work the the workload always slows down at a certain point. Like even Robert De Niro and Al Pacino are not A level actors at this point. I mean, they're not starring in major films. True. And, you know, Bruce Willis did a whole bunch of films, you know, near the end of his career. He has, I believe, dementia now. But like these were not diehard caliber films. You know, as you get older, you know, you're not going to be top billing anymore. That's just the reality of Hollywood, right? Yeah. That's just how it is. There's you, only you, one you, motherfucker the, who don't be aging is what's that guy name again? Dude, I don't date nobody over 25. <laughs> oh, you talking about um You know what I'm talking about? 
Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio, man. Okay. I'm going to be honest. He got some type of, like, <laughs> he always look like he's in his late 30s, 40s. There's something going on. Well, he's, got a, he's got a like a, like a baby face. He got that Pharrell shit going on. He got you know that I mean? Pharrell shit going on. He got that Pharrell shit. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things that uh, Dirk said in your interview is that he doesn't want 6 9 dead, but he wants to knock him out when he sees him. Yeah. I guess there was some back and forth where 6 9 agreed to meet him in a hotel room. And yeah, like, which, which I, you know, I, you know. <laughs> let me tell you this: the internet is a very funny place because I obviously like whoa, because there was already rumors that six nine was gay now, right? Because there was there was some pictures of like six nine kissing a dude on the cheek or whatever. So when people say that, so that's what it was. Y- Kissing y- on the cheek makes you gay. No, no. So it's more than that, right? So it's like again, he, six nine is on the Spanish arc right now. So like he's only doing Spanish music, doing his thing. There's a picture of him kissing a guy, but like also like kissing on the cheek. And also when he was previewing music, like like him and the guy kind of going back and forth, it just kind of look a little, you know, everybody's like, that's sus. And then there's another one where like he's in the pool and like he's straddling the guy's neck. So so he's on top of the guy's shoulder and he's pouring liquor in the guy's mouth, like some Chris Bosh shit. So again, that's why people were thinking that. So when they seen the Dirk thing, they're like, whoa, meet him in a room for what? You know what I mean? But it honestly... What six Plus nine? They can have sex together. <laughs> what is this out? That, it's the internet. It's the whatever the funniest ridiculous. joke is. But here's the thing: what well, people didn't really catch, six nine said the same shit when we did an interview back in um, August 2021. Mm-hmm. In August 2021, when me, him, and Wack and Wack said to him, "Yo, uh, would you fight Dirk?" He says, "I'd fight him right now in that bathroom right here," and he was always like, "Yo, I don't want to fight for money." I dislike you so much. Let's get it in. Let's just lock each. Lock, let's lock us in a room and let's fight. Now, granted, um, would I want to see any violence with those two? Nah, clearly. And I think it's better if they stay out of each other's way. Um, I doubt the two of them will be near each other. I don't. I don't think they'll be sitting next to each other at the Grammys. Oh no, 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 of that sort. Hell no. Hell no. Nah. 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 But, but but honestly, Dirk was like he was pretty admin saying, "Yo, I, I know. I know you talk to him." I will definitely, he says, he says, I will definitely do like celebrity boxing so we could go to Dubai. And he's like, yo, have him put up some money. I'll put up some money. And I'm pretty sure one of those, you know, rich sheets or something like that will put up some money. And let's box. He's like, yo, he's just a, he says, obviously he doesn't like 6 9 but he's like, issues with 6 9 is not something he would be like, oh yeah, we got to get him touched in the sense of like, yo, he needs to like, if if something if people run into him they should kill him you know what I mean so he's like nah so I just don't like him I was just bloody his mouth right which shoot a lot of men have issues like that I was just surprised he said I'll I'll box in a ring because Dirk is also at the prime of his career and I'm gonna be honest I believe him I think he would do an actual boxing match yeah but I don't think it's ever gonna happen nah. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Nah. Even though I did say this, but the way he described it, I think he was like, it was just him and 6 9 putting up money. But I'm going to be honest. If, let's say, someone put up $50 million for this, mm-hmm. I I told him, I was like, I'm gonna tell, I would tell 6 9 to do it. You have to do it. Like, $50 million? Like, come on. There was a time they were offering 6 9 like, 20, uh, no, it wasn't 20. It was, I think it was like 15. It's like a gambling company. They wanted him to box. This was when... The influence of boxing thing was so new, so they mm-hmm. were they were looking for the biggest like he ill in a sense like who's the biggest person that everybody would hate that they would want to see get knocked out. I was like oh six nine, but I think at that time six nine was so like you know he was so set on this oh this music comeback takeover shit. He was just like man fuck that. I think that time kind of passed a bit, mm-hmm. but like shit if he could get like a size of a bag. Bro, you already got beat up at, at, at um 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 LA Fitness. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'm, I'm not happy that happened. That's my guy. But like, if if you already see a video of me getting my ass whipped, I'm good. I'm taking his money. I'm, 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 I'm I, listen. What more can I lose? You get what I mean? If I'm him, I'm doing the Jake Paul. That's what Jake Paul kind of started off his influencer boxing like career as. Yeah. Hey, all y'all hate me now. One of you come knock me out. Except over time, people don't hate him as much as they respect him. So he's having a hard time making people hate him because he's like the asshole shit kind of like is drowned out because he's actually taking the sport serious. But in any, I remember Floyd struggled with that as time went on. He had to almost play a character like, how do I create you guys to hate me that you guys buy tickets? Yeah. So Mike Tyson probably did it the best. Yeah, but I think that shit was just straight genuine. 
I think no, was, no, he actually said he was playing a character. Really? Yeah, when he said, I want to eat your kids, do you think Mike Tyson really wants to eat your kids? Yes. No. <laughs> Mike Tyson is not. I want to eat your children. Yo. I've interviewed Tyson. He he knows exactly who he is. Like, I'm going to put it like this. Mike Tyson might be the most self-aware person I've ever interviewed. Now we're back then because. Um, well, I, don't, I didn't know him back then. Okay. I'm talking about right now. Because I remember one time he told a story. He said he was just so angry at certain things. He said, like, he got locked up one time. And he's like, he's like, people are like, oh, shit, Mike Tyson is, like, incarcerated with us. And he said, a guy offered him, like, yo, hey, listen, I'll make your bed. And he said he got so angry by that, by the guy offering that, he beat his ass. <laughs> it didn't make no sense to me. I'm like, wait, somebody offered to make your, I don't know if that's, like, code word for some other stuff. But he said the guy offered to, like, like make his bed and he beat his ass. And I was like, he used to suffer from some genuine, like, just anger problems. Um, that's why I said when he was doing all that, like, he, I really think he was maybe not obviously being facetious. He's not like, you give me your children to eat. Right. Do you think that he, he was, a, a he human, was angry. a human child? Like <laughs> no matter how angry he got. Yeah, no, shit. no, he, I, I no, remember, he would not. I remember no, he, he was shit not. talking to somebody. He says, he said, I'm going to fuck you till you love me. <laughs> and that made headlines, right? <laughs> it did. It did. Yeah. Cause you got to understand Tyson at his prime was richer than all the other celebrities. You see what I'm saying? He did have like a fucking tiger. Yo, he was like richer than like the Eddie Murphys and whoever else. Like, you, you know, you see what I'm saying? Like he yeah. was, because he was getting like a hundred million dollar fights and shit like really? that. Yeah, no, he was getting like huge, massive paydays. Tyson, see, you're, you're a little younger than me. So you don't remember Tyson in his prime. There was nothing like Tyson in his prime in boxing after Tyson. I, I as big as Mayweather was, was as big as Mayweather was at his height, it wasn't how big Tyson was. Because so, there's something about a heavyweight. Because the fights were exciting. Floyd Mayweather is the greatest boxer of all time in terms of his record. But his fights are relatively boring, right? Yeah, yeah. They all go 12 rounds. People rarely get knocked out. There's rarely any knockdowns. So it's, 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 he will strategically a, a, win the fight. Yeah, it's a strategic master. Not Tyson. If Tyson's you go to the bathroom at the, at the start of the fight, you'll come back to the fight being over. Yeah. You know what I mean? He'll knock people out in 30 seconds. It was like this level of excitement and he's the heavyweight and it's huge. So, it's like So I, I remember that about Tyson. What 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 I think Floyd did, you know, obviously I I, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of pride myself on being a very big pocket watcher. Like <laughs> Floyd made it very obvious to us what, what how much money people were getting. So I'm pretty sure if, um, Mike was getting a shit ton of money because I n always heard of him buying stuff, but I never, I never like visualized it, or I don't think he ever fl like flexed it while he's talking shit to other people like Floyd does. Like mm -hmm. Floyd, Floyd like lives and dies on like his, his money. You know what I mean? Yeah. But shit. I well, Floyd respects money when Tyson did not. Mm. See, there was a story which I wish I knew before we did the interview, uh, where. Um, you know, he was hanging out with Don King and, you know, he got to like Vegas or something for his fight and he went to the, the Lamborghini dealership and he bought a brand new Lamborghini. And then like he went to essentially go park the Lamborghini at the hotel yeah. and he ended up like bumping it into something and he got out. He's like, oh, this Lamborghini is bad luck. And he, says, and he looks at the valley guy, here, you have it. And the guy's looking at him going like, Okay, you're joking, right? And Don King's like, no, it's your car. Take it. He gave a Lamborghini to the valet driver in a spur of the moment because he thought it was bad luck. Yeah, I, I, I heard he did some other stuff like that with a car. He gave it to somebody else, too. Ed Lover. We talked about it yeah, in an yeah, interview. Yeah, he yeah. gave Ed Lover a car. It was a um, was Bentley. Bentley. It was a Bentley. He was like, they were all hanging out. He's like, here, t -t -take, take the car. And so he took the car, and then him and Tyson, like, like, Got separated, so he had the car like in his backyard for a few weeks, and then like Tyson's manager was like, "Hey man, uh, T Tyson wants the car back." So I'm rolling. I got this Bentley. All of a sudden, my pager go off. Nine one one, nine one one with a number. See, that's pager days. I call back. Go, yo, hey Ed, this is John Horn. You know Mike's. I said, oh, yeah, John, I know who you are. Yo, by any chance, do you happen to have one of Mike's cars? I go, yeah, I got that Bentley. Well, we was out the other night. Yeah, I got that. He said, well, give me an address. I'm gonna send somebody to come get it. I didn't think none of it. I knew it wasn't my shit. So they came and got the car. Gone. And then he ran into Tyson, like, I don't know, a year later. He goes, oh, um, your manager called me, asked for the car. Right? He goes, 
Nah, my manager's a thief. That's why I don't fuck with him anymore. Yeah. I gave you that. I, I meant for you to have that car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He would give away cars like they were like I wonder who baseball does. hats. Yo, I, well, I got to get some rich friends now. I need to find a person who's doing that. You know who used to do that type of shit? They said one time Allen Iverson fucking bought a car and parked it and went in the mall, mm-hmm. came out, looked around for maybe like 20 seconds, couldn't find a car, and just left and bought a new one. Just left the left the brand new car in the parking lot. You know who else was like that? Birdman. For real? Still? Birdman, oh, Birdman my friend. I don't know about still, but but back in the day, because TK Kirkland told the story. He said that he went to Birdman's house and they were there was like 10 um Range Rovers, and they'd been sitting there for so long that all the tires were flat. He said that he had 10 uh Range Rovers yes. with all the tires that were they flat. Was flat. Because he just never drove them. Never drove them. Like, we right. pull up to the house, and all Range Rover's Hummers on flat tires, like it was in a abandoned car lot. Damn. So he had 10 Range Rovers at a house that he no longer lived in that have been gathering dust for so long. Think about how long a car has to sit there for the tires to go flat. Yeah. I think that was probably during the era Cash- of... Yeah. Of like, there's a, there's a, like, I watched it on YouTube. There's a old home he used to have. And they they did like, a, it's not a cribs, but it's like a, it's like still up for sale. In, and, in New Orleans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before, yeah, he left it for uh, after Katrina. And if you actually just look at that, you could tell that's literally, remember they used to have stretch limos all over the places. Yeah. Everything had rims. That was when people, like, he created a lifestyle from the videos you saw it got to be back then because it looked like they were just burning through money. Yeah. No, it was crazy. Like it, Birdman did not respect money in, in the mm. sense that you and I respect money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I don't know, that's just the way he is. And luckily, he's continued to make more and more money. You could say that, you know, Baby is the greatest music executive of all time because he's still, he's still putting out shit that people are checking for. Hey, I, I, I did a... I did a sit down with him that that hasn't came out yet. It might come out at a point. And, you know, when we had that conversation, he's like, he's like, you name somebody else who's more successful than me when it comes to like selling records. He's like, yo, he's like, uh, it ain't Jay. Mm-hmm. It ain't, it, it's it ain't not Puff. even, it ain't Puff. Like, you know, he's like, I made all my money from this music shit. I didn't go over here and, oh, like, let me go get some liquor or whatever. I mean, obviously I had the side ventures, but, the majority of his money, music, and, and he says, when, "He said when you put up the stats, me versus any of these executives, let's see who sold the most records." Yeah. It's like, it's like it's not it's not even close. Well, right, because he had Wayne, Drake, and Wayne, Nicky. Like, you, you got to realize there's so much error. There's so many different errors to like cash money, right? So, so uh, obviously, you have juvenile, yeah, juvenile, the first era. Uh, um, BG, um, like I mean, you literally have the Hot Boys, and yeah. then. After that, which would have just been like, that would be the equivalent to what QC has now. Just that. But then Wayne, like, took over. Wayne, yeah. then Wayne took Stepped over. Up. That's like, that's like another three-peat. I look at Birdman like I look at Phil Jackson. Yeah. He's like, you could call it, like, the, the thing about Phil Jackson is this. People could say, is Phil Jackson a product of the great players that came through that played for him? Or mm-hmm. was Phil the person and set up the infrastructure that fostered um, these great players. Like, for example, like, uh, uh, um, obviously, like, Mike and Kobe. Mm-hmm. But when you look at, when you look at um, Birdman with that, it's like, if you got a prime Wayne who's making more records himself than a whole record label, like, just think about how much records he, he's making. Yeah. So you get the hot boys. You also have your career. Right? Manny Fresh is your guy, one of the yeah. best producers in the game. Mm-hmm. Right? Then you get Wayne, who goes through probably one of the best runs ever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, not cool, but like he goes to jail. But now you've got Drake and Nikki and even Tiger. Like, I was just looking at the, the top streaming artists of all time. People really forget Tiger was, was on uh, um, um, Cash Money for the longest. Yeah. Tiger, Tiger is a top. I mean, baby, him, artists. baby himself became a hot rapper. Him and R. Kelly had a best of both worlds part two that yeah. never came out. But I'm saying he was big enough to have a joint album with the biggest R&B singer of the time. That's yeah. how important he was. You know, like 
Baby was a hot rapper when he wasn't even meant to be a rapper. Yeah. You, but it was like, hey, everyone from the label left me. I got to step up. And that's, to me, the mark of greatness, right? Because when it comes to almost anything in life, but particularly in entertainment, anybody could have a hit. If you work long enough, you could come up with a hit song, a hit movie, a hit whatever, you know, a hit piece of clothing, whatever. But, you know, can you repeat it over and over again? You see what I'm saying? Can you repeat it? Because, you know, you will have the hit and then, you know, with, with the success, the people around you will, you know, a lot of times will leave and go off and say, oh, they're the reason why we're hot. You know, like Dame Dash likes to say he's the reason why, why Rockefeller was hot. But you could see what happened after Dame left and you could see what happened with Jay. Jay continued to keep elevating and elevating and elevating. Dame, I don't, it, it, he hasn't come up with anything in the last decade. You know what I'm saying? So honestly, like, look, everyone left Baby and he continued to just even get bigger. People really underestimate how hard it is to be consistently great. Yep. And, you know, a few people that we have as the examples of being consistently great make us take it for granted. But we we really forget how many times we see somebody have a good year. We're like, oh, okay, they're going to be around. And two years later, we don't yeah. even know who they are anymore. Listen, man, people you know said I mean? that about me. People said, you know, there are certain guests that are no longer in the show. And those guests said they're the reason why Vlad TV was great. And I'm not talking about any particular person because there's been a lot of people like this. A lot of people that have, said, you, <laughs> that, that have said, I'm the reason why everyone came to Vlad TV. And those people have not been interviewed on the platform in many, many years. And Vlad TV has still been around in their career. Well, it is what it is. You know, the numbers speak for themselves. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, it's hard work and it's constant thinking and it's constantly having to reinvent yourself. And it's, it's a lot of failure. It's a lot of, okay, let's try this now. Let's try this. And honestly, like, you got to understand that it's those times that are tough that actually cause you to innovate those new ideas. You know what I mean? Like right now, the economy is fucked up, right? CPM rates are down. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there's problems with various platforms. You know, there's problems with the banks, which is affecting the advertising and everything else like that. You know, we sat down and we started switching some things around. Okay, let's, let's shift our resources over here. Let's do something different, whatever else. Like, yo, and those times become like the next level of Vlad TV. And this is why Vlad TV just celebrated his 15th year anniversary last week. 15 Damn, years, bro, from 2008 to 2023. Damn. Shout out to uh, Tony Ayo and Lloyd Banks who did the first video yeah, that says Vlad I, I, TV. I was, watch, I was watching the uh, Yayo. Hey, I was watching the Yayo interview. By the way, uh, as I'm going to get this crazy parallel and I'm going to have a little tangent. I think also what people don't give you credit for um, is what people always ignore when it comes to media in a sense of they think the platform is just all about the guest. It's you have a particular style of interview. You have yes. a, like, if, if I, if I want a real detailed breakdown, like I can see a thumbnail and be like, okay, some shit happened. I know Vlad is like, by the time I'm done watching this, I'm there. Like, like it's, it's going to be a very detailed way and or detail oriented way of looking at stuff, which that's why we tune in to you for, right? Like the guests, the guests are like, it could be different personalities, but it's your style. Mm -hmm. That's the same among every guest. Sometimes people don't really like, you know, um, give that credit because they try to give it all to the guests. Shit. I was even thinking about the whole thing with, um, I seen everybody talking about, uh, undisputed with, with, with skip. I think skip is, is severely underrated in the sense of what people like, I, I love Shannon Sharp, but Shannon Sharp's leaving the show. But people don't realize that Skip Bayless went from one network, built another show, the same show. Mm-hmm. And for that debate to work, because people only fixate on, oh, we like him, we don't like um, 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 Skip. You need Skip. Yeah. You need the hated person. Yeah. You need, you, you, you need the foil. So again, if you have two people that's agreeing, it's boring as hell. It's boring as shit. Right. I just I just met Skip Bayless for for the first time in, in um uh, Beverly Hills just the other day. <laughs> really? He, yeah. He knew who I was and everything else like that. It was it was a dope little moment because it's someone I look up to. Yo, let me tell you this. Skip is needed. Skip is the you need. To, it takes so much courage for someone to say, 
I, uh, let me put it in a better way. Skip says next to anyone, they're going to be a star just because you're going to be more liked. Skip is making himself the person with the wild takes that social media is going to hate, but you're going to root for anybody who's bringing him down to earth or just like <laughs> just giving the counter. So yeah. just by essence, you're, you're, that po- person is going to get popular. But people underestimate how crazy he needs to be to make it work. So they're thinking, oh, no, it's just Shannon Sharp is great. Yeah, if Shannon Sharp is just agreeing, say it's him and Jalen Rose, that show is not a hit. It, you need Skip Bayless, which I think in media sometimes people don't, don't realize that sometimes what they criticize is needed for great content. Mm-hmm. Oh, Vlad's a cop. No, you, you like when Vlad asks detail-oriented <laughs> questions. Right. Like, that's why you come to DJ exactly. Vlad, right? Yeah. But obviously they're going to say it because it's a narrative or it, it's a way they could kind of knock you, but fuck all that shit, man. Right, they still watch. Yeah. <laughs> they know all about me. They'll start pulling out details. Like, damn, that was like eight years ago. You remember that interview? Yeah. <laughs> they hit you with a flashback. Yeah, exactly. Hit me with a flashback. Well, we were talking about Takashi. Uh, this interview is actually not out yet, but I have the first Kuda B interview. Really? Really. What do you say? Here's what's interesting about this interview, and I want everyone to tune in uh, and watch this, because by the time this piece comes out, you know, shout out, shout out to my members, they'll get it early, but by the time this piece comes out, his interview should be out as well. So we went into the whole story. He just got out of prison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did three years total. He did a year, then he violated his probation, his, uh, his parole, and then he had to go back in for two years. Here's what's interesting about this story, because he went to prison for shooting at Chief Keefe. Yeah. Right? Which Takashi, based on that video that was circulating, basically put a $30,000 hit on yeah, Chief yeah, yeah. Keefe. Yeah. On February 1st, Takashi actually pled guilty yeah. to all nine charges. And one of the things that he included in his plea deal was the ordering of the shooting at Chief Keefe. And he said that he offered you $20,000 to do the shooting. Mm. He ain't offer me none. He didn't offer you anything? No. Did he pay you anything after no. the fact? No. Nothing? No. Zero? Zero. And wow. the story has always been that Kuda B, you know, did the shooting and then Takashi told on him. Yeah, yeah. And then he ended up going to prison for three years. Yeah. Kuda B wasn't the shooter. Oh, no, no. I knew that. Yeah. I, so th- this is the most hilarious thing, right? Which it, it kind of reminded me of like even the ex situation uh, with, with the guys who did the robbery. Mm-hmm. It, it's always funny how money gets like, you know, um, disseminated when it comes to like any type of crime. From what I hear, right? It was like, well, actually, I read it in court documents. Shoddy takes the money from 6 9 takes his thing off the top. Right? So he takes a little off the top. Then he says, all right, it's not 30. We got 20. <laughs> and then they give the 20 or some figure like that to, to, to Kuda B. And Kuda B is like, all right, bet. Let me take my 10 and I'm going to give the actual shooter the 10. So the money got split up all type of different ways. You know what I mean? Which well, well, he claimed he never got any money out of it. Of course he did. Well, that's his story. I, I don't know. You know, I'm not well, here. He, well, he could tell the truth at this point. So it would make well, no yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, he already did his He said he never got anything for it. And he basically said the whole thing was caught on tape with the actual shooter, but he was with the shooter at the time. And I said, well, that's a pretty good defense. If it's on tape and you're not the shooter, and they're trying to say that you put it together for the shooter. You could just say, nah. Like, if me and you are hanging out, right, we're having lunch, and you get into it with the, you know, with the waiter, and you pull out a gun and shoot him, the fuck I got to do with that, you know? I, I think they had way more than that. Well, here's what it was. They had their star witness, Takashi 6 9 yeah. who, who, who detailed the whole situation. And he felt that going against that was just too much of a risk because he was facing 10 to life. You know, there was a lot more they had on him, too. Like, you got to remember, it's, it's the fans who came in. So it's not mm-hmm. like they just came in like, oh, yeah, we think you were with the show. No. They had him trying to collect payment. You get what I mean? They they, they also had him on multiple nights because Chief Keefe was in in New York. He was sitting at the W for the weekend. Mm-hmm. They followed him the night before. They didn't shoot at him the night before. He was there. So, again, it, it's it, – it, listen, it's one thing if you're like, yo – 
Yo, my Uber driver just starts spraying at everybody on the block, and I happen to be in the Uber. Yeah. It's a difference to be like, yo, yo, bro, you been riding with this dude for two days? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Going to the same block that he's going to spray up? You look like you might be a little bit more involved. Um, they have him They have him on surveillance footage kind of like stalking Chief Keith, like outside of like it was either a restaurant or like a club. They were kind of like, they were trying to, Lay wait to see when he was gonna leave. Yeah, but he said that. He said they had the whole thing on tape. Oh yeah, but, so, but so ultimately, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But ultimately, what what really happened, which was very interesting, was that had he cooperated and said, "Here's the real shooter," because I, I asked who the shooter was. He goes, "I don't know." You know, he he wasn't gonna put that out there. But if if he had cooperated against the actual shooter, he had the chance to walk away completely. Really? He chose not to cooperate at all. You know, and he even said that when he got to like his final like. You know, you know how in prison, like in the feds, they take you to a bunch of prisons and you finally settle the one you're finally at. He said that when he got to his car, which is like, you know, the area with all the other, you know, inmates and so forth, he said that in the car, you're, you know, who's ever in charge of that group of, of men, they ask to see your paperwork. Yeah, yeah. And if you have a snit, you know, if you have snitching on your paperwork, they'll tell you you got to get out or else they're going to fuck you up. So, so he had his paperwork with him, which he actually brought with him to, to our interview. Well, I, and he showed the paperwork and he said that I didn't cooperate at all, which is why he did his three years. I, I think the reason why he's also doing that, too, is that um, WAC 100 has been on Clubhouse for the last he three years. That. Yeah, he mentioned WAC that. WAC 100 has been saying that he told on 6 9 which <laughs> he, he told on 6 9 <laughs> Basically, you're saying he, he did the, the gunner in a sense by saying because he took a plea and he admitted to basically taking money for the shooting, he basically implicated 6 9 for giving the money. You get what I mean? Listen, man. 6 9 cooper no, no, no. That, that doesn't make sense because 6 six nine cooperated on day one. Like, you know what I'm saying? As soon well, as he got locked up. No, nah, I'm, I'm not buying that. <laughs> no, no, but I understand. But listen, Wack, Wack is in, in some hey, sort listen, of business man. with 6 9 so he's going to do his best to protect his client, protect his money. I get it, man. I get it. Wack's the greatest, man. <laughs> well, uh, in the Dirk interview, he said the gunner is a rat. Point blank period. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised he said that. Really? Why is that? When Dirk told me you could ask me about anything, I'm thinking I'm going, going in for a Floyd Mayweather type fight. He's going to bob and weave. He's going to slip a few punches. Maybe I get him to say something definitive. Nothing about any mainstream artist. Nothing relevant. Maybe at Best, he will address the young boy situation directly, but he's not talking about about uh, Gunna. He's not. He's not even gonna really touch it. And it was one of the few times I've seen an artist just say, because I basically asked him, I said, "Hey, you dropped a song. It looked like you were dissing him on the song. Do you think the guy's a rat?" He's like, "Yeah, he ratted." And and I was I was so shocked he just gave me a straight answer. I was like, "Oh shit, wait, he just just told the truth." At least, because usually people, they don't, like, you know how you, when you're interviewing someone and you know what they would say, or maybe they even say to you off camera, but they're not going to say it on camera. And he just said it. Look, the gunner situation is, you know, it, it's not exactly straightforward. And depending on who you are and what you stand on, you're going to look at it how you're going to look at it, right? It, now, from certain people... You know, like, for example, when I inter interviewed Fredo Bang, right? He said it point blank, period. He said, Taking time is cool. Taking, a, you know, taking probation, whatever, all, that, all that's cool. I would never agree that my label is a game. Because it's not. It's a label for a reason. You feel me? I would never, I would never agree that my label is a game. I would never agree that my label has did any crimes. Um, even though I was to plead out, I would still say, I'm pleading out. I'm taking this time to get out of jail for, to go back to my family. But I would never agree that this is a, a gang or we're committing crimes. Now, Gunner decided to go a different way. He said YSL is a criminal organization, and I've seen people do things in furtherance of the gang. Now, whatever the repercussions of that are is what it is. But I think from a point blank street point of view, the boosties of the world are going to see that as that. I only think it's a, it's a little bit unfair because I, and, and I, Dirk is one of those people as well. 
Yeah, I, I still think there's a selective politicking going on with, with the um, gunner thing. Um, it's very blatant. Like, for example, Young Thug's brother, Un Funk, who just got, you know, he just violated his, his, his nine probation. Nine and a half years for a gun charge. Well, what, 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 it's, it's not nine and a half years for the gun charge. Everybody took 10 years in probation. Exactly. All, all these guys. That's what like, I'm saying. He was on probation. He was free and clear. No, no but, but here's the thing, though. We've heard Meek even say it, though, right? But but all these guys are just thirsty to get out of this case, right? Even though they claim it's really a bullshit case, whatever. There's somebody who took 15 years in probation. Yeah, right? I know. 15 years in probation. Like, you do realize that if you do anything and they catch you, and this is the first guy, he's getting taught a lesson. Mm -hmm. All those guys who, who signed the pleas thinking, oh, we got out of jail scot-free. It's like, no. no. You, when you're on probation and this is... You know, like I said, with Kuda B, we even talked about this. Like, he has three years probation. When you're on probation, you're technically still in jail. You're just able to live outside of the prison walls. Yeah. But you're still technically under the jail rules, which means that if you get pulled over by the police, they don't need probable cause to search your car. Right? Yeah. They can go and say, oh, you're on probation? Get out. We're going to tear the car apart. You can't say shit. Mm. They can show up at your house without probable cause and ransack your house. They could show up and give you a urine test and so forth. You know, because I was like, oh, you know, can you smoke weed? Because weed is legal in New York now. And before you know it, you'll be off papers. Right back and, to you know, it, yeah. go back to smoking weed or whatever else you want to do. It's a fact. You know, weed is actually legal. Wait, can you smoke weed? Hell no. But it's weed is legal, legal in, federal in New York. York. It's not legal. Oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. right. It's yeah. Right? <laughs> That's how it works. Boosie called it. Like, I remember in our, not our last interview, but the interview before that, he said that these 10 and 15 year probations, he called them rat recycling bins. You're a rat recycling bin. You know what that is? No. You're a certified rat, right? Right. Now you're recycled in the system for the rest of your life because you can't stay off drugs. Because everybody's calling you a rat. You're getting all, you're just discombobulated. You can't stay off drugs. So you're a rat recycling pin. You get recycled in a pin every three years. You're going to get dirty urine. You're going to get some kind of charge that keep you violating. Mm. You're a rat recycling pen. Uh. He said they know exactly that they let these guys out with these hellacious 10, 15 year, you know, probation deals that they will fuck up and go right back to prison again. But, but, and then they'll start on and then they'll make them possibly try to snitch on whoever else to try to get back out again and then rinse and repeat. But, but this is what I'm saying about the hypocrisy, right? So. Because Un Funk, right? I think I'm saying his name right, gets violated and he goes to jail for this nine years, his plea paperwork now comes out. All these plea paperworks were some of them were sealed. So oh. so so we get to he said he initialed everything that Gunner said and more. Really? So that's the new thing. People are saying, well, your own brother, he initially says YSL is a gang. He initialed it. I know of multiple crimes that other people did that are in YSL. He initialed right there. He did the same thing. Crazy. What I believe is happening, though, is, number one, I, I think they're super upset that uh, they believe he, he started off the domino effect where he set off the chain in motion where, well, I think they, they forgive everybody else for doing the same thing because they're saying, well, this guy already said it, right? But secondly... I think the reason why Dirk and even like Baby, like Baby unfollowed Gunner, mm -hmm. Dirk speaking about it. But anytime you hear that these guys speak about it, you hear they say, oh, I love Thug. Clearly, Thug can't be on the phone saying, fuck Gunner, right? Like that's witness uh, tampering and yeah. witness intimidation. I think people, th those rappers closest, I think they're getting the information from Thug. And whatever Thug, unfortunately, it's not about just black and white because I'm telling you, his brother did the same thing. Hmm. It's about how Thug feels. And if Thug don't rock with you, it is what it is. Yeah, 600 Breeze, you said that. He said the only way that he sees Gunna getting his career back is if Young Thug publicly comes out and says, I supported him taking that plea deal. It was all good. It didn't affect me. Do you think at some point he could get to where he was before or even bigger? That's the only way that he can do that is when Thug come home and, and be on his side. Aha. Okay. That's the only way. If if Thug don't put out a statement, 
saying that he didn't, he didn't tell on him and that's his brother, or you don't see Thug when Thug get out and be like this and they still be Thug and Gunner how they was, his career ain't going to be able to do it no more. He needs that. It, it, it has to be kind of, um, I think it's going to get a little legal, though. It has to. Like, for example, you know, he drops his new song. It's yeah. out on YSL, the uh, label, right? I thought he was off YSL. No, he's not off YSL yet. Okay, so that, right? that was a rumor. Uh, well, th- there was conversations that he was trying to get off. But also, if I'm thug, why would I let you off, even for a buyout? Why? You get what I mean? Number one, I can control when your music comes out. Mm-hmm. I'm going to profit. Shit, if you already told him, at least get us rich. You know what I mean? Like, again, um, so he's, here's the thing, though. Gunna is doing a PR thing, in a sense, to try to clean his name. But while doing that, he might have to throw dirt at other people to say they did it too, or maybe well, even reveal a little bit more. I'm wondering that. if at a point... Maybe YSL says, hey, yo, you're talking about this case that Thug's in. We can't put the song out. That's a real thing, too. Might be. Might be. I mean, listen, he put out a song, Bread and Butter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it got 11 million views between mm-hmm. YouTube and Spotify. Those are very solid numbers. I don't know if it's, you know, had he not gone through that, would it have gone crazier? I don't know. But, you know, what you're referring to, there's a line there that says, uh, you, you switched on me when you know you're in business with a rat. Mm-hmm. which you, along with a lot of other people, assumed was about little Baby. Yeah. But then he went into the comments and said, that's Cap. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think everybody knows it's about little Baby. So you think he's just lying about that? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, yeah, I've clearly he's lying. Right, because you know? I think what he's referring to is the whole P. You yeah, know, yeah, P yeah. from QC allegedly mm-hmm. has paperwork over yeah. a dude that killed his friend or, yeah. or something like that. Hey, uh, but, but but why would you deny it if it was true? I mean, I mean, if, if it's not, if that's really what you meant, I, I'll tell you why. Because why? those sequence of bars are meant to speak to the person who he's dissing, and I think he realized he fucks up by putting it on record. And we're fans nowadays; like we we find every little nuance and we decoach it. You don't think the fans? He, no, you no. don't think that he thought the fans would figure it out. But but he's talking super street shit. Like w- w- what he gets into, it's deep street shit. Nah, but but the whole the whole story about P no, 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 no. spilled into the media to the point where P even addressed no, no, no. it, called it fraudulent paperwork. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. See, he, there's four lines straight back to back that he mm-hmm. mentions. He mentions little baby, or not mentions. He's alluding to little baby. He says you in business with a rat. That's not the craziest part. The craziest part is him saying. And you still hanging with the people that got your man whacked. And allegedly, he, he's making reference to Lil Marlo, who allegedly got killed by maybe. I, I don't see. That's where it gets oh, deep. Oh, you still fuck with the uh, yeah. that then got your partner. So that's wow. where it gets deep. Now you have like, bro, you basically almost putting a case on him again. Like, like you're basically, you're in, on a street sense, if you're saying that someone's hanging with the killer of your friend, Bro, that's not some stuff you should even want to see on a blog. You get what I mean? So now you put it in a song, everybody's connecting the dots. People are even mentioning, you know, mentioning certain names that they feel that line was even talking about that's now getting shit hot for everybody in Atlanta. Bro, you, I, you just came out of jail for five months. You was on a Rico. Why would you over, over here even go that deep in terms of street shit on a song? So I think that's why when... Fans, blogs are basically saying, oh, no, these lines are at Lil Baby. Because it wasn't just the, the P line. It was all those lines, right? right? I think that's when he's like, nah, 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 it's all cap, right? Because he wants to diffuse it on the social media level. But everybody in Atlanta knew who he was talking about. But, but that's a street yeah. issue. I'm surprised he went that deep with it. Yeah, look, that, that whole YSL case is a, a mess, an absolute train wreck to the point where they're still not out of jury selection. Jury selection has yeah. been going on for what, three months now? I've never seen jury selection take this long. I've they never, I've never seen it. They haven't picked one jury yet. Right, because who the fuck wants to sit in a courtroom for six months? They've had who has over a job? 1,500 people come in thus far. Yeah. 1,500 people this is going to take over a year. The, the public defenders who are defending some of these guys, they want to make OnlyFans. They right, say yeah, yeah, a, Chick-fil-A worker, yeah. a Chick-fil-A <laughs> worker, a Chick-fil-A worker want to, like, gets paid more than them. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think, man, th- there's only one saving grace, I believe, for Fonnie Willis. Because this this case is looking like a train wreck. 
Mm. I think the judge also is irritated by the case too because he's overreaching a lot. He's telling people they got to write 55 essays, page yeah. essays. You got to buy everybody lunch. Like he's locking people up for prescription pills um, that they're actually prescribed because they have it like, it's a mess. But there was a hand to hand drug sale. Yeah, they're doing all type <laughs> the, of stuff. People courtroom. passing yeah. each other perks. Like, right, this, exactly. This shit is crazy. You know, this shit is like the, it's like the block. Like, you know, this shit is crazy. Yeah, pretty much. Young Thug is in court dancing to music. This shit is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, again, this whole, uh, Fonnie Willis, I believe, I think they're looking for an easy way out. They keep severing people. They just severed another person. Mm. So now it's like six people. Oh, Honestly. really? Yeah. They severed Down from what, 18? It was 14. 14. Right? They remember, like three of them are still on the run. Like, just think about how, how crazy is this shit. Yeah, three people who are in the indictment still ain't get arrested. Two, two people, no, actually two or three still don't have lawyers at all. Mm. <laughs> Y'all are picking the juries, but they don't have lawyers at all. They had to get severed too. Um, basically, some of these guys are are, are like it, it's just no reason for them to even be on this case to kind of like drag it all out because some of these guys are already doing life. Yeah. Like so, like the whole shit is like ridiculous, and um, you know they're telling the jurors. Imagine you have a regular job, and they said, "Yo, Vlad, um, these are this is a questionnaire they're asking jurors. Are you willing to commit the next twelve months of your life to this case?" Yeah. Who the fuck? Hell no. I mean, that's what happened to the OJ case. Like, if you watch the documentary about the OJ case, the reason why they felt that OJ ultimately won was because the only people that were left in the jury were people that were essentially unemployed. Uh, See what I'm saying? All the actual like professional people who had jobs, who had careers, who went to school, yeah. who had something going for them, they all left. They were left with eight people who were unemployed, who had nothing to do. So therefore the overall education level and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say the intelligence level because intelligence is, is you know, you don't have to have a job to be intelligent. But I'm saying that all the people that were, you know, went to college, have careers and understand things on a slightly higher level, they all bailed out. They were left with a whole bunch of people who were, you know, on welfare, uh, on disability, you know, sat around watching TV all day mm. that had nothing going for them. So they're... They're into conspiracy theories and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> QAnon shaman types, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Who basically were like, yeah, this is all a conspiracy and he's not guilty. Hey, I'm, listen, I'm wondering, like, for example, with, with Ivan Lucci, right? Apparently he was offered like a 20 year. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that, which he rejected. Yeah, he rejected it. But, but still, uh, these guys, obviously there's a murder involved. So there's probably no favorable plea. And really, I don't I don't think, I think they want to really throw the book at Thug because if you go by their theory, which they're going to say he was responsible for ordering the murder, if they give him anything but 20, right, it's going to look like he's getting off pretty lightly for doing, doing such a thing. I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to get to a point of just saying, hey, listen, man, we already gave these guys like probation. Man, this fucking case is a mess. We'll, we'll go below whatever we're, we would would have normally offered or wanted to get from you. But we got to just end this shit, man. Yeah. And I think for Fonnie Wills, Fonnie Wills, I think, you know, we just seen Trump get indicted um, for the second time. This was a federal mm -hmm. one. She has a case sitting on her desk for, you know, Georgia, yeah. uh, Georgia with, yeah. with, with Trump, which I think possibly could redeem her good stature and good standing among people, because I think people have been looking at her with this case to say, it's one thing you're cleaning up crime, but this whole case looks like a fucking mess. Yeah. This just looks like a mess. Yeah, I this mean, is the fact that it hasn't started yet, people have been sitting in jail for what, over a year now? Yeah, yeah. And, and it hasn't even started yet. There hasn't been a single juror that, that's been picked shows that it's a disaster. And you know, shout out to the lead attorney who came in, who's been following this case, who said the exact same thing. He said, it's a mess. It's a mess. Like the, the lawyers are saying they're gonna have to do only fans to support themselves. Hey, I, I, I you know, and I always say I, I hear from my Atlanta street sources. I hear that it is a little bit lighter at the end of the tone um, when it comes to Thug, in the sense of it's a possibility he might get out on bond because of how crazy this trial is. Like the trial mm -hmm. is is taking so long to start. They just let out a guy who got denied like four or five times. And actually, they locked up his lawyer. The guy whose lawyer was coming in court with like his prescription and they locked him up. After his lawyer got out, I think the judge was like, this is some clown shit. Like, let this guy out. Y'all are locking up his lawyer. 
He just got out on bail. I think it makes it look um, a little bit more attractive for Thug to say, hey, listen, to come up with a package, say, hey, let me go back to my mansion. Um, I'll show up here every day to fucking pick a jury. But at the end of the day, like, we're we not even getting this shit started. I think the judge is, is kind of frustrated with this whole thing. Well, according to George Cheedy, I think the reason why no one's getting bond is because what you said earlier, there's a bunch of people that are uh, still on the run. Mm. And uh, they're worried about jury, I mean, about uh, witness tampering and intimidation and stuff like that. You know, the fact that there are two, is it two key members are still on the run is complicating things. Mm. And listen, at some point, the trial either has to start or it has to be dropped or people have to do plea deals. You know what I mean? Listen, maybe they ultimately give Young Thug a five-year plea deal. He takes it, you know, ends up doing two and a half and comes out. Who knows? This is one of the things that I don't think people also think about in, in the sense of like a prosecutor. Yo, you, your tax paying dollars are funding this whole thing. Yeah. It's they're running through money trying to charge. Well, not, they're charged trying to try these guys and they're doing a very ineffective job of it. Yeah. And it looks like there's no start and no end in, in sight. Mm -hmm. So, again, at a certain point, it's like, what are y'all going to do? We'll figure it out. Yeah. And I just want to touch on this before we get off the subject. You know, the whole little Dirk versus NBA young boy thing. NBA young boy actually went at you. Yeah, you, it, it was like so surprising. And, and you and him were cool, right? Yeah. It was. Yeah. You guys have an interview that never came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have an interview that never came out. Um, I, there was a time he used to tell me he watched the interview every day. Um, I, I, I think, you know, fans always ask me about that interview. I think it's probably... It's going to end up, I don't compare him to Tupac, but it's going to end up like how that Angie Martinez interview with Tupac never came out. At the time when we did the interview, and I think he admitted it later when me and him talked, even on Clubhouse, he was at a very different place, just just like, I'll just say spiritually. Like, it was focused on maybe the wrong things. And if that interview had came out, it was him really... just stoking the fire at certain shit, like, you know, probably going into certain stuff that, you know, if you want to remain out of beef and you don't want to keep antagonizing, especially when maybe deaths have been involved, and yeah, you, you don't want to put that type of thing out, you know? And I think there was a time that he was just like, fuck it, I don't care, right? Like, fuck it, you guys got to do something to me, fuck it. And I don't think that's his energy now. I think, if anything, him being on house arrest for the last three years and also him being married, he also got kids, you know, he's always had a lot of kids. He's always had kids. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he's just kind of, he's finding a new purpose to live. Like, he would listen to his interview with um, 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 Elliot Wilson, mm -hmm. where he's basically saying that, you know, he's been linking up with people who are a little bit more spiritual. And he looks like he's kind of having, he's growing up a bit. And people really forget, like, he's like 22, 23. You know what I mean? He's been on for a while, but he's, like, yeah. quite young. And, you know, Birdman has really been around him a lot, so I'm yeah. sure he's been trying to, you know, yeah. sprinkle him with some game and stuff like that. I mean, listen. It was shocking when he went at me, though. So, you, you know, <laughs> which, which is like, you know. I, I, I've, what was the reason? Okay. So, his reasoning is this. He believed that I was working with Dirk to get pr promo for Dirk's album. And I was using him. I think that's what his reason is. I'm going to tell you why. So, I'm on live stream one day. And every day I'm on live stream, because I cover these guys so much, people just want to update on their never-ending beef. Yo, yo, did you see what Dirk said? He's dissing young boy. Now, in reality, like, that's why I also why I said I was shocked that Dirk answered the question directly. Dirk will diss somebody, but subliminally, all the time. He does it all the time. Except he, for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he's been, he's been sending shots at guys from his neighborhood for like the last four months. I don't know if there was a falling out. Remember, he also said he cut his crew. Like, he, he mm -hmm. slimmed down his crew. Yeah. So when fans were asking me one day, like, yo, now I think he's dissing young boy, I clarified it. I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, that beef is almost like a squash because it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. They're not actively dissing each other anymore. You get what I mean? And fans have this insatiable appetite to see the best and the worst parts of a beef play out on like, in front of their very eyes. They never, they, like, for, for example, 50 Cent and Rick Ross, they're never going to be cool, but they're not dissing each other constantly anymore. You get what I mean? And it just kind of subsides. 
So I said, I, I basically said on the live stream, I said, yo, I'm like, it's basically like a squashed. Like they're not this, like whatever you think they're saying that at each other, they're talking about different people. Yeah. You I mean, just don't know. And I guess it was so funny because young boy been saying recently, stop the violence. And I guess me saying that the beef is squashed got him even more upset. <laughs> right. Shout out to Tony Yayo. He always says on the show, and this is someone who's engaged in the most amount of beef in hip hop history. Mm -hmm. He said, beef doesn't die, it just gets old. Because beef is never dead, it just get old. Mm. You could see a motherfucker could come back from some shit from 20 years ago, 15 years ago, and never get dead. So I always watch my back. Mm -hmm. Is he still beefing with all the various people that Gino's beefing with? No. Does he like those people? Is he going to take pictures with them? No. It's just, it's 20 years old at this point, and people have gone on with their lives. And that's and, it. So that's why Young Boy got mad at me. I, I guess he thought I was co opting this narrative hmm. that was going to be helping Dirk sell records. My only thing with them, and, I, and like, think about you and Boosie, right? Now, Young Boy is someone who's like, we've been on the phone mad times. Like, this is someone who, you know, I've talked to him about all type of things. You get what I mean? This is somebody who has called me before and said, yo, act. Yo, I need you to go here for me. And I've, with with the drop of everything, I literally, oh, let me get on a plane in the next two hours type thing. Right? To, do, to do what? Well, like, it was like, uh, uh, I had to do some interview and also, like, this was some house, some of the stuff didn't even come out yet. Okay. Um, but, but, like, this is a guy who, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not just thinking about, it, like, just it's just work. I'm like, yo, this is a guy who, if he asks, if he asks me for a favor, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm thinking vice versa. I'm thinking, like, we're cool, you know? And I've learned out of this whole thing, like, the word friends, friendship is, like, really, I use it way too frequently. Yeah. Because I, I am totally guilty of this in this industry. Yeah. You think that if you do a few interviews with people, that you're actually friends. But and, that's not always the case. And also, here's the thing, too. I start, like, it, it took this moment for me to kind of, like, look back into what I believe the friendship was and and just, and then I realized it was completely one-sided. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, you do anything for this motherfucker. This motherfucker. Right, he doesn't. wasn't doing any favors. He wasn't doing, nah, hell no. Nah. But hell. he did do an interview with you, but unfortunately it never came out, so therefore it wasn't really a favor. Yeah, exactly. You get what I mean? <laughs> so it, it's, it's like, yeah. and, and, and even with that being said, I looked at it to say, well, I, w I would have expected a call. Hmm. I would have expected a call to be like, hey, what's going on here? Like, like, or I didn't like this. Right, but didn't the same thing happen to Boosie? What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And Boosie and Youngboy had a whole mixtape together. And then Youngboy dissed him on a song. That was, that was odd. Yeah. I think people like that you have to watch out for. The ones who, who, are, who throw away relationships with people at the snap of a finger. Yeah. Um, you don't know what to, you can't tell what side of the bed they're going to wake up any given day. Yeah. what they're going to say about you. So then, you know, I'm pretty sure he's loyal to certain people, but I don't think he's loyal to someone he probably met through rap. Yeah. So what that made me realize, and I know his fans are always like, yo, well, he's the guy who's getting blackballed. It actually crystallized all the issues that people say he has, like in the sense of, well, he's beefing with Dirk. Like Dirk said that Drake wouldn't, or he actually said on a song, he talked to Drake on the phone. Drake wouldn't do a song with him because he's cool with Dirk. Well, you don't value friendships. <laughs> you, you, you did somebody you did a tape with. You don't, you don't care about it. Yeah. That guy does. Yeah. So obviously his friends are going to treat him differently as opposed to you who have isolated yourself. And, you know, um, they always say no man is an island. And shit, if you, if you think you're an island, we'll see how it goes um, for how long. But I think that's, it crystallized all of the things that, you know, he's been going through. And I'm like, I don't know why I I, I, I was that surprised. You get what I mean? Well, uh, Tory Lanez. Yeah. He is still in jail awaiting his sentencing. Uh, he went and got a very high-priced lawyer. Mm, mm, mm. They try to get a retrial. That got struck down. They tried to dismiss the judge. That didn't work either. He's facing a minimum of nine years, but the prosecution actually wrote a letter to the judge asking for a harsher sentence of at least 13 years. Jeez. And there is actually, you know, I wrote down the, the factors of why they asked for this. 
She said there's three aggravating factors that will allow for the judge to give Peterson, a.k.a. Tory Lanez, a more severe sentence. The defendant's actions demonstrate a high level of callousness. Uh, also, he used a semi-automatic handgun and Megan the Stallion was vulnerable at the time of the shooting. As the victim began to walk away from the defendant wearing only a bikini and no shoes, the defendant mocked the victim with dance, bitch, as he opened fire in her direction. With no justifiable reason, the defendant fired not just one, but up to five rounds in the direction of the victim in the middle of a residential neighborhood. The brazenness of the defendant's conduct is alarming, but the conscious disregard for the well-being and safety of all those around him signifies a high degree of indifference for human life. Mm. Now, I, I've been saying this for a long time. And remember, I was like the only person in hip hop that a year and a half ago said that Tory Lanez is going to jail. Mm. Right? You remember that? Yeah. I, I've been stating this. And everyone's like, no, he's getting off. She's I, lying. I, I, and let me tell you this. Um, this is one of the... I, I've realized that, especially I've been watching the Travis Rudolph case, right? You got to watch the trial to actually come up with a solid opinion. Anytime you're getting it through other people's, because that's what we were all going off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we would hear these reporters who are coming out of court and they're like, yo, so this happened. And I'm going to be honest with you, it sounded like he had a beat. I'm like, oh man, this guy's, right. I'm like, yo, they might not even go to the jury. They might be like, yo, Tory, peace, bro. Like, yo, go ahead. And and when I seen this come back, I get I got to realize, um, I think a lot of people already you know, and, and shit, I thought he didn't do it. I still kind of, like, I'm a little doubtful, but the, the, the verdict is a verdict. Yeah. I think the people who were reporting at court at that time were biased based on whatever they already, so they were reporting. Well, exactly. For example, Mo Gangad, who is a regular on this show, who is pro every rapper that I've ever interviewed him about. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's innocent because his plan is to become a defense attorney. Oh, really? You see what I'm saying? So it makes sense He's why- He's just he... getting entertainment law. I kid you not. He'll <laughs> right. be making a bag of Yeah, this. exactly. Instead of employment law. But yeah, his his goal is to move into defense law. And he was I, always I try saying- to interview him. I tried to interview him about that case. And he was always open to doing something with me. But like he fell back. He didn't want to talk about it too much. Hmm. It was a little odd. Well, I, I think he thought that Tory was going to be innocent. You no, know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's exactly. what I'm saying. So I wanted to talk to him after the case to be like, what the fuck happened? Like, you're a lawyer who was sitting through it. Mm -hmm. You were, you're, you're one of the credible people who are saying this is a fucking shit show on the prosecutor side. You kind of led me to believe that Tory's beating the shit. Yes, but once again, and shout out to Mo. I like him. He's on my show. <laughs> like, he's a regular on my show. I've never brought up any situation with a rapper that he wasn't on the rapper's side. Every single time. Okay, okay. So he lacks objectivity. I, I think there's yeah. a bias there. And shout out to yeah. Mo. And, and I'll, I'll tell him that. Like, you know, I mean, he knows I feel that way. But, you know, um, for example, you know, the the, uh, the girl, the uh, Megan, the reporter, you know, the girl that was... Uh, Megan Cunniff. Megan Cunniff, yeah. Me and her talk on a regular basis. Yeah. And w when I was talking to her and I said, how do you think it's going to go? She's like, she's going to be found guilty. Boom. Guilty. You know, when, when the whole, like... You know, retrial thing happened. She was covering it all. I'm like, I'm like, how do you think she's gonna go? She's like, this, this ain't gonna work. Like, he's not well, gonna. Well, he's I mean, not gonna I get told you that was gonna work. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, like listen, if, if it really comes down to that, if you have to go back to the same judge and ask the judge to reconsider um, that you didn't get a fair trial when th that same judge made and agreed to everything. Yes. And basically, his, his thing is that you're bringing up these new things. Why didn't you object then? Oh, wait, you have buyer's remorse because you didn't take the stand. Wait, you're you're upset at um, us playing a 80 minute interview with Kelsey, do you know why this happened? You called the prosecutor, you said the prosecutor was was coercing witnesses and, and yeah. bribing them in a sense. Yeah. So I allowed them to play the, the tape to sh that the jury could see if the witness was, uh, um, if it even sounded like the witness was being coerced to say yeah. something. So again, th that wasn't gonna work. Then you're trying to dismiss the judge. This is such a shit show in the sense of like, you know, I'll give Tory's credit because he's trying everything possible. Like, I mean, everything possible. Yes, but but I will say this, and I've been saying this, and no one seems to listen to me, but that's okay. Everyone has to take a step back and realize that you're not dealing with computer programs here. You're dealing with human beings. And human beings have feelings. Human beings get insulted, get their, you know, are petty. And the same, the same set of emotions that you and I go through, the prosecutors and the judge go through that exact same set of emotions. Now, they try to present a professional face. They don't want to make it look like they're somehow biased or they're pissed off 
or they're angry, but those emotions are very real emotions. So if you're sitting there waiting for your sentencing and you're calling the prosecutor racist, you're saying they're corrupt, you're saying that they purposely hit evidence and they're trying to send an innocent black man to jail, so you're bringing a racial element into it and so forth, they're going to say, okay, we're going to turn around and write a letter to the judge to ask for more time. I, I, Fuck you too. I, I, I think I think the issue here. Too I mean, am is, I right though? No, no, you're right. Yeah. But, but, but so 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 I just want to say before, before you go on, you are at a disadvantage, Tory Lanes. The prosecutor has more power than you. You're sitting in a fucking jail cell right now. You're at a disadvantage. Why would you aggravate the person who has your life in their hands? Do what you have to do, but all that extra shit, those voicemails, basically trying to bash the the, the character of the person that's doing their job. You could have left all that shit out and they may not have written that letter to the judge. Well, I think the reason why he's doing this, and I think this is where he's going to run into the biggest problem, is that over the two or three years when he first caught the case, people more and more increasingly started to believe him. And we even had Drake who basically said, the chick is lying. You get what I mean? Drake said that? Yeah, Drake said on the song. You know what I mean? What, What did he say? It was it was something about May. Oh, it, shots! It, 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 she lied about the shots or whatever the case is. Like basically, and he took some flack for it. Yeah, okay, but I remember, yeah. it became one of those things where the the majority of the um, industry were, was like, "Yo, you know what? This Tory guy might be innocent." And with that came a sense of support, and it was such a big deal, and people trying to root for him. Right. I think these things where he's writing the letter. He's gonna realize that people are emotionally checked out of this story now. Like, they- well, well, here's the thing: all those people, Drake, don't matter. Yeah, well, 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 well I, at all. Well, I, I think, I think he was all your, all your fans don't matter. Well, you know who matters? Those jury members. Well, and now that yeah. that's done, you know who matters? The judge and the prosecutor. That's well, it. Well, those are the only people that you need to get on your side. That's it. Well, there is an angle that I think a lot of people use when it comes to like high profile cases is like, especially if they really feel like they're being treated unfairly is like, hey, um, the more attention or the more people who seem to be invested in this, the better off I'll have in terms of a chance of beating it if I think I'm being uh, handled unfair. So I, I think when he's writing these letters, if there was maybe people like it worked for Meek, like it definitely worked for Meek, right? Like. You literally had um, you had a governor who basically I mean, was like, "Hey, Meek's, Meek's story was a little different, man. Meek went back no, to no, jail no, I'm, I'm, for I'm not, riding a dirt bike. No, no, I'm, you know I'm, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm, there was no victim in Meek's case. Hold up, you see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not comparing necessarily the the um, the situations as closely, but I'm comparing just how it was handled. Meek not only got out of jail through public support and public outcry." The case he was actually given probation for, that got that sentence got vacated. Right. So he literally, they basically went, like that's how much public support pushed the like th- that's not happening. Okay, fine, you get out of jail, but they're not going back to a twelve year old case where allegedly you pulled a gun and there was a cop there, and they're gonna say, oh, you should have never been found guilty in the first place. They did that for Meek. Why? Because all of a sudden, everybody rallied around it. And even when you have someone as powerful as Michael Rubin, you have other people who are in government. You have also a, 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 you have a governor who was running for re-election using this case to say, we need some reform. Hmm. That shit worked for me. What I'm trying to say is that these letters that Tories write in, it's not going to pick up the same steam. Because first of all, I don't think no no politician would ever be like, oh, hey, t- we're gonna rep for Tory while there's a popular female musician. That's while a there's a female victim who got shot. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't it's think that's never gonna, gonna happen. happen. But it's never gonna happen. I, I think the majority of people who did care was the public, and I do think that you won't have a second time where the public is this invested in this case. Mm-hmm. I think that's why even the judge is denying everything to say, hey, listen, we went through this saga already. We went through the circus. It's over. Yeah. Like it's done. Yeah, all the DNA evidence and all yeah, that, yeah, like, all that, all that was you guys had your chance to present all that in court. Those two weeks of of trial was crazy, and people just like every day was like, "Oh, this person said this, this person said this." People are emotionally spent, 
And um, I, I think that's why he stopped because he said he was going to drop a letter or he was going to expose somebody new every day. And Tory just stopped. He, he did it once or twice and he stopped. Well, look, I understand, you know, the buyer's remorse over not taking the stand. And at the end of the day, I've always said, you know, based on everything I've known and everyone I've talked to and, and all the evidence that's presented is that ultimately, you know, Tory was the one that, that shot Megan. I don't think Kelsey did it. And I don't think the driver did it. I don't think she did it herself. I think an argument, you know, a, a, a alcohol and possibly drug fueled argument over people sleeping with each other broke out and, and Kelsey had a role in it and so forth. There's clearly some witness tampering. You know, Kelsey, who didn't remember who paid for her lawyer, you know, and totally changed her whole story suddenly and so forth. You know, like, you know, this whole situation was really Tori, you know, ended up shooting Megan in the foot. And, you know, you could tell, you know, the whole phone call, the jail phone call buried him. The, the, the Instagram post saying that Kelsey didn't do it. So who did it and so forth? They did it. And ultimately, he is paying the price for this situation. Now, I, mean, I, now no, I, I just want to say this, though. In the case, if he was 100% innocent, and I, and I understand from the point of view is that a lot of lawyers will take you, tell you not to take the stand when you're in the defense because it's not, you to, it's not up to you to prove you're innocent. It's up to them to just prove that, you yeah. know what I mean, that, that you didn't do it. There's a reasonable doubt. But for example, I interviewed Hurricane Chris, right? I, I who went to trial. Now. Well, it, it's, it's always going to be different. But his thing is, is that in a murder case where he was facing life in prison, he took the stand. No. He took no, the stand right. and said, I am not going to leave it in the hands. I'm not going to put my life in the hands of my lawyer. It's I know what I did was self-defense. I took the stand and I beat it. Oh, no, I knew I was going to talk from day one. It was never, it was never a thought in my mind of silencing me. This is my life. I know exactly what happened. I'm using, I, I mean, my lawyer is a terrific lawyer and he, he, he did an amazing job, Alex Washington, but at the end of the day, I had to get up there and say my part, bro. I couldn't just put everything in their hands like that. I gotta look these people in their eyes because my life is in their hands. And I'm gonna talk directly to these people and see if they could see. I'm not no lying ass nigga right now. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's no way that Tory, Tory taking a stand will come off good, especially when you have a woman crying, right? This is a. But if he didn't believe? do it at all. Yeah, well, 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 if he didn't do it, listen, if my lawyer told me not to take the stand and I, I, know, and I didn't even have the gun in my hand, I'm taking the fucking stand. I don't know how any way he could, he could have came off, he was sympathetic to that jury. Came off, not came off. If I did not shoot, if me and. If me and your mom yeah. got into it. I shot your mom. And yeah. They say I shot your mom. And I just didn't do it. I am going to take the stand. And I say, I did not do it. I didn't do it. Here's what happened. You have to believe me because I didn't do it. I, I think the story he has, it's going to always come off as almost like bordering into just chauvinistic and misogynistic. He has to imagine when he takes a stand, he has to tell a story of how he's trying to be this playboy playing women against each other, kind of already coming off a little Which bit isn't manipulative. Illegal. No, no, you're right. But, but, but again, nothing legal about that. When he tells the story, even if, again, it's all about believability, too. Yeah. You, then you get to, the, you're basically, you come off like you're, you're manipulative. There's no dope way to tell that story. The, the thing with the Hurricane and Chris uh, situation is like, hey, listen, I was in fear of my life. Yeah. And and this is what happened. Yeah. In this situation, Tory has to explain the web of lies that he probably already been telling these women, which already makes him untrustworthy. So again, when he gets to the part to say, but I never even... shot her, it, they're going to be like, well, y y you're admitting that you lied a bunch. Of, again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it could have helped. Lying to, listen, I, I, I think every juror on that, on that uh, you know, in that courtroom have probably had one of their lovers lied to them, <laughs> okay? I think at the end of the day, I think everyone's been cheated on. Everyone's cheated on somebody. You know what I mean? You, you, you have, you're dealing with different, you know, sexual relationships and so forth. 
at the end of the day, he could have just sat there and said, yeah, I was, he, he could have, if that's, if, if, listen, yes, I was playing these two women. I was sleeping with both of them behind their back. I am absolutely guilty of this. And I'm, I'm sorry that I did this. You know, I know that I made a song about it, which didn't help. And I, all this other shit, but listen, I did not shoot anybody and I'm not you're here. Right. I'm right. not on the stand for cheating on a girl. Right. I'm on the stand for shooting somebody. Right. It, it sounds great. And I, yo, you would've, we would have been killing this nigga for that. Yo, you would have had to name who shot her. It's, look, exactly. Look at, but, right. but they did. But look, they, look but at Troy the, Ave. Like, people still look at Troy Ave. But, like, Troy Ave is looking at like, well, I, I had to take the stand because he's trying to almost act like it's a self-defense thing, right? People looking at him like, bro. Which it, which it was. People are looking at him like, no, well, he's, well, I'm saying in I both mean, situations. Jack Stone's situation yeah. of self-defense. But, um, but, but, but that's, that's my stand uh, uh Troy Ave, like, he's saying, oh, me taking a stand, that's not snitching. It's, 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 it's me being you know, self-defense, so I'm just giving my, st whatever he said, right? I think Tory realized that um, there was probably going to be a little bit of ramifications to him taking a stand. You got to name the girl. Like, you you can't, okay. just, you, 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 can't you can't do what everybody's doing. For you to take be effective in you taking a stand and say something that nobody else has said, you need to name who shot her. Because everybody else has these, like, convoluted, conflicting, Oh, I seen a, I seen a, the muzzle coming from a woman. I think I seen a short guy with the gun. You got to literally say, hey, listen, I might have took a shot or two. And also, here's the thing. He was drunk, which, by the way, I, I found that very odd. Everybody was drinking. This was a whole drunk, wild night. Yeah. But, yo, know, there's a point where they said someone was blacked out drunk, like just like passed out drunk. And nobody even says, wait, wait, wait. How, how, how can we really gauge the veracity of all these testimonies in a sequence of events if y'all y'all was lit y'all was drunk right. so i would imagine tori just being up there trying to like he would have to just point at the girl like yo she did which is what his defense attorneys were trying to say yeah right yeah yeah yeah. and the question is how come his driver who i believe is also his cousin why did why would, did he never take the stand because he was the sober one in this situation right Th that was the oddest part of the story yeah exactly that the driver showed up the last day of trial. Yes. But he never they couldn't stand. find him. They couldn't find him. Also, the prosecutor wasn't trying to look for him. It was kind of odd. That's why also, like, I was leaning toward his way. I'm like, wait. It seemed like the but, driver but would the driver would have been on Tory's side, right? That's his cousin. No, I don't think that was his cousin. From what I hear, that, that? That, was his, that was a new, it was a security guard. It was a new security guard. It's not as, because I know I know his his normal security guard. It's a new security guard that he was using. Okay. And however, if you ask me, they told that nigga not to show up to court, man. <laughs> like you'll be like, yo, listen, don't come anywhere near this courthouse. Tory said this. No, no, I'm I'm thinking that. Who told him that? Well, I would think they told a the guy not to show up. Who is they? I would think there's a bunch of hands going on. I, I really think that Tory's team, like again, this is my thoughts. Uh, this is not, I have zero facts to back this up, but how this plays out, it's impossible for there not to be certain things at play. For example, the witness that, that initially put in, in statement, hey, I see the gun flash coming from a woman, but I see two guys breaking up a fight. The witness supposedly, Tori's father said this outside the courthouse, the, the witness um, who was supposed to testify, Sean Kelly, meets with the prosecutor and I got to imagine, this is just my thoughts, the prosecutor must have scared the, the living Jesus out of him. Like, to say, hey, you get on been, that stand. There might have been some witness tamper. Yeah, but like, you, you, you get on saying? that fucking stand. And you and, lie. And you, li you lie. You're sitting in jail. Right. For he perjury. Goes, yeah, he gets, on, he gets on the stand. He says, the shots came from the, the, from the short guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Never said that before. <laughs> right? Okay, so I'm thinking the, the, um, the, the, the DA kind of scared him a little bit. So that's why he got, he got right. Scared him into telling the truth or scared him into lying? Because at the well, end of the day, if you're telling the truth, you're going to tell the truth regardless well, of what the DA is going to tell you. You're not going to lie for the DA. Like, you well, know what I'm saying? You're not going to perjure yourself for the DA not to get perjured. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Well, open to whatever. Right, right. You no, know, I get what you're saying, but open to whatever person's interpretation. Now let's go to Kelsey. I got to think the Kelsey thing, I got. it feels almost like maybe they were in cahoots with Tori a little bit. I thought Tori was running a play. Like, I'm like, oh, shit. This this guy, it's like who some pay, who paid for Kelsey's lawyer? I would imagine that that comes through remember, Tory. Well, I think it's routed a different way. Through so, Tory. Well, I would I would think so. She said she doesn't remember who paid I would for think a lawyer. So. 
Have you have you ever paid for lawyers? Of course. Who paid for them? Well, first of all, the lawyer <laughs> fees is fucking expensive. Exactly. I definitely know who. The exactly. Fuck paid for. <laughs> I definitely I, know. Who I've paid spent them. hundreds of thousands of dollars <laughs> yeah, on lawyers. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I can tell you exactly who paid for it. It was fucking me. Yeah. yeah. I paid for every lawyer. I'm not gonna forget who paid a hundred thousand dollar bill. That's why I think there's like a underbelly of this case that of witness tampering. Um. Well, yes. Well, well, just beyond that. Yes. Witness well, tampering. Well, well, just beyond witness tampering. It's just. What's beyond witness tampering? Well, how all of these things kind of happen. How did Kelsey go from, hey, you're my best friend, Meg, to now saying, hey, Meg, pretty much you're a fucking liar and this didn't happen how you're saying it is, to now she's basically in court, damn near essentially taking the rap, but not directly taking the rap for, 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 for shooting Meg. Yeah. And then basically she she says, and then the prosecutor has to remind her, hey, you know, we talked to you like not too long ago yeah. when the case was supposed to start and you actually said it was him. Yeah. And she's like, what are you talking about? Well, here it is. Play the tape. Yeah. Play the tape with that. There is so much. I think they were both pulling strings, man. They're both pulling strings. I'm not saying illegal because I don't want to make those assumptions, but I think this case was, you know, you know just like how in the tax stone case, when, when tax stone says, hey, do anything. Like he says to like his sister or whatever, he's like, yo, do anything to get this motherfucker to say, you know, like when you saw me, I had like the bottle of Duce in a cup of my head. You know what I mean? Like just say what needs to be said. I think, I think certain witnesses conveniently didn't show up <laughs> and certain witnesses did. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. Freddie Gibbs. Yeah. Two oh, of man. you have been going at it for, for years now. Now nah, it's over. Is it over? Yeah, it's over. Okay. Cause well he uh, he reacted to the, the live show he did recently yeah. where uh, how many people showed up? Uh, so the, the internet has been running with eight people. Eight people. So you know, really it's more than that, but who cares? Who like cares? The, 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 you, you got to go with the funny joke at that point. Sure. You know what and, I mean, and it's, also it's a night number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eight is enough. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and um, you know what it is too. Uh, I'm one of those people. I, I I get my chance at clowning everybody, so I always know that I'm not exempt. Yeah. And I'm gonna be honest with you, like. I've 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 gotten this ability recently to kind of step back to like this shit's funny <laughs> like yo this shit is actually fucking funny. Well, so was this at the Roots picnic? So yeah yeah. yeah. So it, the Roots picnic booked me to uh, do a live podcast there. They've been doing live podcasts for the last couple of years. Okay. Wago actually put me in contact with the person who's doing the bookings. And, and by the way, I have nothing but respect for them because I do believe that live podcast is a great thing for people who do what we do. Who were you interviewing live pack? Um, Actually, I was just doing the show. We, we, okay. we, we, basically, it was just like me, like we just have a regular hip hop conversation. It was, okay. I brought out my friend, my man, Lil Boom. Um, we we're just really just, it wasn't like interview anyone, right? Mm -hmm. um, I could have, but it, it wasn't even that type of thing. Um, just like Charlamagne. Charlamagne brought out, I believe Jess Solaris has been on, on The Breakfast Club recently, trying out as a third host. So he just brought her. You know, usually he would have been with his. Oh, he did a live podcast on there too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah okay. he did the, the day after. Um, so it, it, in general, and this is why I'm taking it really, you know, I hope I'm taking it well, in the sense of I don't want for what people are going to turn this backlash into for this festival to say, you know what? Fuck the podcast shit. Let's just focus on only live music. Hmm. I hope other podcasters, shit, I hope I get more opportunities to be able to do podcasts live. And, you know, again, you win some, you lose some. Uh, I think people didn't realize that, and I didn't realize that at, at, at the beginning, they had me go on stage <laughs> 30 minutes into Lil Uzi verse set. Right. So Uzi. And this was in Philly? This is in Philly. Which is this Lil Uzi Vert's hometown. So this is in Philly. <laughs> By the way, like, again, if I had to say what my demographic is, my demographic is exactly Uzi fan. Yo, while I'm on stage, I'm hearing Uzi's music blasted. I even told the crowd, first two seconds I'm there, I wish I was there. You get what I mean? <laughs> um... But yeah, so no, it, it, it was a it, it was a, it was a tough thing, and also the demographic of the Roots picnic, like everybody was there for the Fuj the Fuji's reunion, like you know um, Lauren Hill really she closed at nine. I was trying to start later, hoping that Uzi was going to be off stage. Except I sandwiched myself too. They were like, "Hey, listen, you there's a hard cutoff. You have to get the fuck off stage because Lauren Hill has his non compete clause in her c contract, which means when she hits the stage, everything is done." So there's no other option to watch her or leave. That's it. 
And um, you know, it, it, you know, it's a little humbling, but um, you know, uh, if 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 me pulling eight people, I was actually surprised eight people even came <laughs> while Uzi was performing. I think that's just tough, man. You know, yeah, man. But, listen, you're a good sport about it. You know, hey, no. but, well, Freddie Gibbs, you know, laughed at the whole situation yeah, yeah, yeah. on Twitter, but before then. I guess the story is, according to his ex girlfriend, Fit Mommy, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Des- Destiny Creams. That's the real name? Yeah, Destiny, Destiny Creams. Creams. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's why I said the beef is over. Like, yo, you could laugh at me about the eight people. Like, bro, like, w- w- right. So, according <laughs> to her, in a series of tweets, she got pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as she got pregnant, he ghosted her. Yeah. Now, that's. You know, that happens all the time. There's nothing really outrageous about that. But then she does a porn scene while pregnant. <sighs> I've never seen anything like that. If that, you, if that you're moment, talking about a, a get back on, on a biblical level. No, <laughs> yeah. at that moment, my beef with amendment. That's what it is? But it's just like, it, you, you have to realize, like, me getting my laughs off of that was like, there's no f- more crazy thing that could happen that I could really feel satisfied to joke about other than that. Other than, un- unless you want the guy really hurt or dead, like, which I don't. So yeah. I'm like, you know what? I think I've gotten all my laughs out. You know, at the end of the day, you know, he still has a, a child to raise and he has to deal with this woman. Mm-hmm. I'm good with laughing about it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done poking at you now. You it's, it's hard. Hard. I remember you were you were calling. This is your Beyonce. And yeah. Well, well. You know, in reality, like here's the thing too. Because I was trying to do something on my stream. I was trying to, you know, she was kind of open to a lot of things. So uh, we were trying to raffle off, you know, naming the kid. That would have been cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. Come on. Act. That that's that's not cool. What? No, that's not. He's cool. not claiming a kid. Okay. Somebody got. You know why she's doing it's still, porn? It's still no, no, no. Kid, hold so on. Hold on. That, that, you know why that, she's doing porn? Right. She's doing porn because she's saying he cut her off cold turkey. Right, he said, but she, she said, was doing porn before they met. Yeah, yeah. So. but but she said he mm. asked her stop doing scenes with other guys. Okay, which for her she was like, okay, I get it. You have a career. This might make you look right, whatever. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. Right. Also, he knew she was doing porn. Mm-hmm. Bet. Now he cuts her off cold turkey. Like she got like doctor's appointments. She got to still a lifestyle to live. And also, apparently, this is what she told me privately. She said, "Yo, there's a whole fucking like." Like fetish, like 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 segment or section of the population that just like to see pregnant girls get fucked. So after I seen that, yeah. you're like, I'm telling you, my beef is over. <laughs> the beef, the beef it, is it, over. It's like, listen, yeah. him even tweeting the thing with the Roos picnic. That's like, that's like, that's like motherfucking uh, 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 LeBron James shooting shooting at, at like shooting three pointers after the game's done. <laughs> like it's over, dog. Like you already you got eliminated. It's over. Like, it's over, bro. All right. And, and I guess she ended up doing a scene with two guys while she was actually <sighs> pregnant. I remember I hit up Adam because it was on Adam's platform. And I'm like, did, 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 did Fit Mommy, while pregnant with Freddie Gibbs' baby, do a, a threesome on your platform? He goes, well, we didn't realize she was pregnant at the time. But, yeah, I guess if you look at the timing of it. And, and I remember right around that time. Now, I got to shoot to my boy Adam, man. Adam hit me when that happened. He said, oh, it's Adam. Like, just for you, man. It's like, I'm just get, for you. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get a nice little Amtrak ran up in here. <laughs> just for you. I'm like, Adam, like, yo, you know, I'm like, yo, that's my guy, Adam. Yeah, shout out to Adam. <laughs> um, you know, when you, when you see something trending and you're like, I shouldn't click on this. Yeah. I, I really shouldn't click on this. But yeah. you end up clicking on it any, anyways yeah. and you regret clicking on yeah. it. Spready Gibbs. Oh. <laughs> What's trending? Spready Gibbs. Yo. And I'm like, I shouldn't click on this. I really shouldn't. But Yo. as someone in the news media, I'm like, okay, I'm going to click on it. Apparently, she had Freddie Gibbs's butthole, like a photo of it that she posted. Hell hath no fury. Hey. Hell, <laughs> Satan cannot match you posting your baby father's asshole on Twitter. Yo. Like, <laughs> yo, the fact that I know what Freddie Gibbs' asshole looked like. Wait, she posted this? Yes. You wallet. Yes. I didn't see that. I, th- I thought Freddie Gibbs was just good enough. As I kid you not, it's the first time I've checked out of a beat. Like, I'm like, I literally felt like I've, yo, there's a few motherfuckers I don't like, and I've been wondering at what would ultimately satisfy me that I could be like, yo, I am good. 
Yeah. And I now wish you luck. I wish you luck. We don't have reference. But this was it. And I'm like, damn, I'm calling the beef. It's over. But yeah, let me tell you this about um, watching that. I'm, I'm always confused about shit like that. Like, you know, when, when I think about it from a woman perspective, it's like, yeah, I had a good time because I don't like the dude. But you're going to have to co-parent with them. Yeah. I mean, look, you're, you're, you're going to, your child relies on his income. Yes. You emasculating him, you saying certain, like, these are the things that always baffle me. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. You know, and, you know, she's a porn star. So she's like, well, I should, could be able to do porn pregnant. I, I, I think that's traumatizing too, but to each his own. But doing things to be that vindictive, I get that he left you. It ultimately puts you in a situation where if there was any point where he could have, like, because sometimes I know a lot of women who they get pregnant for a dude, the dude says, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. They walk away. The woman goes to the pregnancy pretty much alone. Yeah. That baby get born. A couple months later, the dude tries to come back around. The reason why, you have a, you have a life. That's yeah. entered the world. Yeah. And that's that happens all the time. What, what she did is kind of almost isolate him. It's going to make it 20 times harder for him to be a father. Like, if you have to deal with this woman now, you're always going to remember that it, it, it's, it's, it's just a living representation of how she handled this situation and how she tried to. She went for the jugular. Oh, no, she went. The juggler, the heart, <laughs> the main artery. You know what I mean? Brain, like yes. the so, whole, and, and it's one of those every vital organ. Yeah, and it's one of those things where you know, and and this is another reason why. Again, I'm I'm calling the beef with him in in the sense of, man. Again, I think we have jokes at each other's expense. So if if he has a moment that's laughable, I'll add my jokes onto it. Like clearly, we don't like each other, but but I said on Twitter, there's a child involved now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? After I said, after I was like, let's raffle the name, I'm done. I'm done. That was the last thing I had to do. I, but, but, but anything beyond this, this is permanently in life. So, you know what I mean? Again, you know, good luck to him. Um, as a man, I have empathy for that. Because as much as you don't like him, if a, any woman did that to you, like, I could almost see, like, your damn, if, if, imagine if my baby mother did that to me. That would be the worst feeling in the fucking world. And that's where I'm like, yo, listen, man, you got it. Yeah, listen, Freddie Gibbs doesn't like me either. I'm not quite sure why, but he's talked shit about me online when I've never said anything negative about it. Do you believe in karma? Yeah. Well, I believe you can connect the dots with karma. I don't I don't look at the 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 mystical version of it of energy flowing around, but a lot of times, you know, you could connect the dots. Say this happened to me, and when you talk to the person, they'll talk to that person. Then you could actually trace to see what happened back to you. So absolutely, Carmen. Freddie Gibbs has been on Twitter starting unnecessary, like literally, like just unwarranted. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm wondering, like, did it manifest into like this situation? But also, what I what I another reason why you know I feel like all these reasons is like me almost like patting myself on the back, like, oh, this beef is done. You won. But she said something very important, which you always wonder about people like Freddie Gibbs who seem to always be starting stuff. They're always whatever. She said, you, I know how you used to be depressed. She showed messages where he's saying how like all of this shit is getting to him. However, on Twitter, he's just laughing. Yeah. So basically he's keeping this strong face on and then you get to realize like, you know, sometimes people look at, you know, like Twitter and just think the guy who's always making jokes is like, he's living a happy life. Yo, he's, he's pretty depressed. So, yeah. you know, you kind of look at that and I'm like, bro. Yeah, I mean, listen, Twitter is fake for everybody. Everyone, you know, puts out, you know, Spray whatever, things. whatever image, whatever representative they want to put out in the world. And like I said, he did cause a bunch of unnecessary beefs. Like, I still have no idea why he talked a bunch of shit about me when whenever I've seen him, I'm like, yo, let's do an interview. Like, I actually think he's a good artist. You know what I'm saying? Like. At the end of the day, whatever happened between me and him is really a bunch of nothing. But if you're going to take shots at me, I'm going to do interviews like this. So we can just keep it going forever. I don't care. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like this is my business. Hey. You know? And the, the thing is with you, like, it would be nice if you guys could squash it because technically nothing happened between y'all. Yeah. 
No, 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 and and and, and, and an academics Freddie Gibbs interview will ultimately help everybody, just in the same way that me and Annalie Chopper were at each other's throats at one point and bashing each other, and millions of people were watching. We got on the phone, had a respectful conversation, which turned into his biggest interview ever. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I'll I'll tell you this, and it also is about growth too, man. Like, um, me and Vic Mensa talking about doing an interview. And there's like if people would think about like some of the moments who they think that moment of me and Vic Mensa kind of going, and we never talked since then. We've dissed each other afterwards, but you know, we're grown ass men. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like yo, let's actually have a, a grown up conversation. Like he actually came out in a freestyle and he said, yo, you know, he like he apologized mm. and he was just like it was kind of dumb. Yeah, and. I'm, I could be the the person with ego to say, nah, fuck you, blah, blah. But I realized I was like, dude, you know what? Like, I think we're both older, right? We've both grown from that situation. We both could probably see each other's perspective a little bit better. Let's sit down and like, you know, fucking just talk it out, my dude. Like, it's not that serious. It, it, and it's hap- it, it, for me, it's good when it's at that point where no one got hurt. Mm-hmm. And that's why I even say with the Freddie Gibbs shit too. It's like, yo, there's nothing more at all that I could actually like. It would have to get physical with us for for something to be like, oh shit, this is more this is more enjoyable than what you've seen already. Like, bro, I've gotten every joke I could get off of you. Like, yeah, I mean, and look and look what happened with the the Benny the Butcher situation. Yeah, it got physical and it got ugly. And honestly, someone could have lost their life in the yeah. process. Somebody could have gone to prison. But the it's, process, it's, it's it's all it's all yo, words it, and it's all posturing, it's all clicks, it's all views, it's all this, it's all that. Like until, but then when it gets violent, then it's hard to 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 circle back from that shit. You know, honestly, what I mean, usually when things get violent, you rarely see people working it out. Yeah, 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 it's and when so things weird. get deadly, it's even harder to work your way out of that situation, if not impossible. I've been wondering if, if Freddie Gibbs was ever open to like that conversation. He's a funny dude. Like we should we should have been done. Content. Okay, how about this? We're gonna put it out there. So academics, you're open to sitting down with Freddie Gibbs. Of course. There you go. This is official, Freddie. I know you're watching this. Of course. I know you're watching this. this. And, and, I know and, you're and, watching. And here's the thing too, which, which I, I always like. I, I had I put out this into the the, the atmosphere already. I was like, hey, yeah. listen, it could be even great content. You roast me, I roast you. Yeah. But like, it's not that serious. You no. get what I mean? And like, I, I think sometimes. We started the doubling down and the doubling mm-hmm. down to now it's like, all right, let's say I'm in L.A. somewhere and I'm at some restaurant and he's at some restaurant. Now, we've never seen each other before, mm-hmm. but now it, it becomes a battery in somebody's back. Like, if you don't do nothing, you're getting called a bitch. Prime 112. That's probably how that situation <laughs> with, happened. Uh, with Jim Jones. That's probably how so, that situation Even though he's always denied it, but he has a new project out called Prime 112. So. No, of course. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> it is what of it course. is. Of course. Yeah. It, it, listen, I, I, it would be cool if... But I think it's bigger than me, though. I think he's he's done what he's done in, in a sense of this and me to a lot of people. I would have hoped that he could at least have that grown-up moment to be like, yo, it's unnecessary. You're actually an artist that's not that bad. Um, these beefs don't help you. They close doors on you. Like I heard from one artist that he, um, because he was supposed to, they took him off a record because they were trying to, I want to put the artist's names out there. There was a record with a very legendary rapper hmm. and and the, the person was trying to put together a song that was going to be that person, the legendary rapper and Freddie Gibbs. The legendary rapper hated Freddie Gibbs for whatever reason. Just and and I'm like, why? It was just like it's like it's the way he acts, even with you and with other people. He just has a nasty personality when it comes to other people as well. Hmm. And now hmm. you have people who don't want to be on records with them. It's made it harder for him, if you ask me. So so I'm looking at him like your dog, like, bro, you're not even like six nine. Where 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 it's like, hey, you could turn the bullshit into some type of attention that's moving in social media units. You're not even you're not even getting even the best press for this stuff. Like, bro, just grow up at a point. Yeah, there you go. Do an interview with uh with academics. Man, and man, listen, let's get it. Fr- Freddie, listen. Freddie. Like I said, we've we run into each other. I think the last time was maybe at a Complex Con or something like 
10 years ago, nine years ago, some shit like that. I'm like, yo, let's get an interview. He's like, all right, cool. We exchanged oh, numbers. Oh, my fact, I did meet that motherfucker too. Like, yo, my brother, this is how funny shit is. My brother, I remember he called me. He's like, yo, why are you afraid of going at it? I'm like, I said, I don't even know. I don't even know why. <laughs> but but I'm like, yo, I'm like, I don't even know this guy. He's like, he's like, no, we met this guy before. He was like, what do you mean? He was like, yo, there was a party back in the day that Carl Cherry from Spotify threw before I was even at Shout out to Carl. Before I was even at Spotify. He invites me. Everybody was there. Um, shit, Rory was there. <laughs> um, but 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 um, Freddie Gibbs was there. Freddie Gibbs was trying to get me to smoke a joint with him. And I was just like, damn. Like, I, I remember that I'm like, yo, he was mad cool that night. Why the fuck did he get so mad at a very innocuous comment saying that, well, if he believes that Jeezy is irrelevant, I guess he's irrelevant too. That's all I said. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, he's been so upset. And him and Jeezy are cool now. So- Right. You know what I'm saying? There's not even a reason to be upset anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's just words, man. Yo, yo, it's kind of like when I was talking to Drama. Drama was like, yo, I said, how'd you squash the beef with Drake? Then, you know, Drake didn't like Drama, too. He said, he said, after I realized that Meek and Drake got back cool, he said one time he's at the 4040 with Meek and he tells Meek, yo, you better FaceTime that motherfucker right now. If you're cool with him, you better get me out of this beef, too. Like, yo, I'm going to be cool with him. And he said, that's how he got back. Like, it, it's odd when... Someone's mad at you for some someone else, and then they become cool with the person that they're mad at you for, and then they're still mad at you. Nori was mad at me, and uh, you know we had our you know we we were friends at one point, then we not we were cool, then we became cool, then we weren't cool again, and he was saying stuff about me on his show and stuff like that. And one day, man, I was just like, you know, he went through his shit with Kanye, you know, with you know putting out that that video, which yeah. ended up, you know, Kanye ended up losing the deal and everything else like that. And I just hit him up, and I'm like, "Yo, man, listen, like, I'm I'm looking through these text messages. I mean, it was actually over like, I was talking to this dude Sam Sneed, who used to be one of the producers at Death Row, and he was like talking about doing an interview, and he's like, "Oh, I also want to do Drink Champs. Are you cool, with Nori?" And I'm like, "Nah," and he's like, "Why?" And I'm I'm explaining it to him, and as I'm explaining it to him, I'm realizing how dumb it sounds. You know, I'm realizing One this is ones. They, they, like like these are two guys with raging egos who both think that they're they're the shit, like trying to out ego each other over text, and I'm like, this is so dumb. Like on my part and his part together, like we're both just arguing over. Do you know who we are? Do you know who I am? Kind of yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. situation back and forth, and no one wants to back down. So I just hit him up. I'm like, yo, man, it's a shame that. You know, two years ago was the last time we talked. Like, I actually valued our friendship. And then it took like a month for him to respond. But he's like, yo, I agree. Like, I used to really enjoy mm-hmm. our friendship. And we haven't gotten on the phone, but, but you know, both of us like, yo, man, the, the, the hatch has been buried. You know what I mean? So you've never heard Nori say anything bad about me on Drink Champs. And you've never seen me. Well, I never said anything about him publicly anyways. But you've, I, I've voiced this in my interviews that like, yo, me and him are cool, whatever that means right now. But we're just not, you know what I mean? We haven't hung out. We haven't done interviews. But but there's no animosity between us. And sometimes someone has to be the bigger man and put out that first text. And, you know, sometimes it takes a while for that person to absorb it and, 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 and respond. And, and it took him a month to respond. And also, but it was all good now. Sometimes it takes time for you to realize it's stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like if, if, if Vic Mensa, like, three months after when I, when, when I, when I did that interview with him in L.A., if three months later he was like, man, my bad, I was tripping, I would probably be still upset. Yeah. You know, I, it, but, but after, after a while, time kind of heals shit to be like, listen, how many things have gone on in your life? How, how much does this one incident matter? And also, like, how far are you still prepared to carry this? Yeah. And also, have you grown as a person? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, again, the litmus test usually is for me is like, hey, did y'all get physical? Or is it something where there was imminent threat to your life? Mm-hmm. Um, or was it just talk? Yeah. Or was it just talk? You know, and most times, just... 99% of the time, yeah. it's just talk. Yeah. Well, speaking of relationships, uh, you and your girlfriend, is it still your girlfriend? Uh, no. Okay. You guys finally broke up. Listen, it's, 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 it's one of those situations. We broke up a few times. A few times. But yeah, we had are you, to... are you, but you're currently not together. No. Nah. Do you think you'll get back together? Uh, I would say no, but I never say never. Never say never. <laughs> hey, go ahead. Because well, I remember when I did an interview on your platform last uh-huh. time, a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah. Me and you were hanging out, and then like I looked over and I saw this look on your face, and I'm like, "Yo, what's going on?" And yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah. 
ah, I, I, my, my, my girl just put out all this shit on the internet and yeah. blah, blah, and you know, now you had to deal. And I, I felt really bad for you because I was right there when it happened. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, wasn't there another situation where she like slammed the door on your mom's hand? Nah, like well, the, you, you said that. The, was, yeah, I saw the video of you saying. Yeah, that. yeah, but, but like I think people are. Um, I, it's overblown because I didn't really explain the story. Um, you know, it, it's by the way, very bad sequence of events. But um, the same time that happens, we're trying to get her out of the house, just because, like, hey, listen, you know, like, you know, a woman will get into all your shit, man. Like a woman will will get into every fucking thing, like every passcode you have, she knows how to get in there. So, uh, like, she's going into a room because she was like bunkered in like my studio space, like I have a whole studio in, in like my 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 house. She was like bunkered in there, and um, when I went in and I unlocked it, she left, and then you know she's going into like the bathroom, like that's upstairs, and you know my mom is like saying, "Hey, wait." And then she she closes the door. My mom hand get caught a little bit, um, and after that she she just she moved out. Right? Because were you saying like your brother wanted to call the police or something of that sort? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because you're dealing. Let me tell you, like we black, you know what I mean? So like we deal with a woman, and a woman's going crazy like that. Like you know, unfortunately, like it's going to sound like a very bitch made thing to say. The only thing, the only recourse you have is contacting the police and usually contacting the police before it gets any type of violent you know why because you know again nobody cares if she slapped you 20 times if you even like pushed her like you're done so you know uh in, in that situation you call the cops you know what i mean so were the cops called yeah there, there was a restraining order put out on her yeah was she arrested nah nah well, you got lucky because in California, I think because of the OJ case, when there's yeah. a domestic dispute, the cops have to arrest somebody. Really? Yeah, because, you know, uh, Nicole Brown would keep calling the police on OJ because yeah. he was wilding out and everything else like that. And um, OJ never got arrested. And then ultimately she got killed. And the cops were being basically bashed, like, yo, you guys had all these warning signs. You could have arrested them, and yeah, that yeah. could have potentially stopped this murder from happening. Well, you know, whatever. He was found not guilty, but you know, still the, yeah, the yeah. overall sentiment is that, you know, he did it. So now in California, if if the police get called and it's domestic, somebody's going to jail that day. Uh, so you got lucky that you were in what, New Jersey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got lucky. And also, I'll be just thinking, like, man, this. Listen, when you call the cops on a woman, like they really, they, they, they let me tell you how they treat it. They bring the woman over there and they look at the woman. And they say, "Fuck what he, fuck what he talk about." Do we have a reason to lock him up? I'm yeah. you, like, no, so it's, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it's one of those situations where, trust me, they're more than accommodating when when you're saying, "Hey, this is a this is a person who is clearly not, you know, this, the woman is doing something. You ain't doing nothing, right?" Yeah. So they basically look at me like, "You really want us to lock her up?" Like mm -hmm. that's that's the type of time they're on. You yeah. know what I mean? You got lucky. Which which again, me, I try not to like, you know, I don't want to put nobody in jail. Like, you know, a lot of those times you just, I just need to be separated from that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, listen, uh, every relationship is different and uh, you have fucked up relationships that ultimately get back together and you guys work it out. You know, you guys are still fairly young. Uh, you yeah, know? Not, not, so I'm not going to say that, oh, don't, don't ever get back to her. Because listen, people grow up, people realize their mistakes, you know, you know, and I'm sure... It's never, I don't care what happened, it's never one side in a relationship. I'm sure there's stuff that you did that you probably regret in that relationship as well. No, you're and, right, but, but yeah. I, I'll tell you this. Yo, you know, and, and I, I've been likening this to uh, the Travis Rudolph situation, um, which, by the <laughs> way, that did end up fatal on a, in a sense. Yeah, but he, he beat the case. Yeah, he did beat the case. Yeah. But somebody did not. Um, women lack accountability. That's big, well, number one. Number two, Anything is a equal uh, um, consequence of their feelings being hurt. Mm. When my feelings was hurt, I burned this whole fucking bitch down. That's <laughs> what a female, that's yeah. how a woman works. Like, like, like again, it, when, when you're talking to them and you're trying to reason with them, like, they have this thing called emotion that, again, they're looking at, like, you're texting another bitch. Of course I broke all your shit because you're texting another. Like, like it, it's you can't even really rationalize a woman to a certain extent. Um, one thing I'll say, man, 
I, I've just realized that, you know, especially through, through my relationships, um, I've been with like, I've been two girls publicly, um, or I guess what the public knows in terms of dating. Um, I was never with Selena Powell, even though people keep thinking I was. But those people who I've been with, I lived with. And what I realized, I feel like it's almost like either I'm picking the wrong females to be with, or it's just like a, a gradual decay of younger females all thinking that they're in like a reality show. Well, meaning their actions um, are just of the sort. They let a fight. Everything they're online with, they put out public information or private information. They put it publicly in the drop of a dime. There's lack of decorum. And, um, you know, shit, maybe I, maybe I just got to take my L in that situation in, or in those situations to say, man, you know, it's on you because you're picking the wrong people. But I'm going to be honest with you, I'm running into a lot of chicks who, like, I have a few red flags now. Like, I'm going to tell you what my, what my red flags is. Any chick that eat hot Cheetos, big red flag. <laughs> <laughs> Any chick that got T-Mobile, big red flags. So I ain't going to lie. <laughs> if they watch Zeus, they watch baddies. That's like a, it's like a reality show. Yeah, I know. All they do is fight. Like they, like they, they, it's a whole show based on fighting. They're at the audition fighting. <laughs> They're at the reunion fighting. They're fighting every day. Yeah. They're fighting in clubs. Any so any chicks who watch that, or anyone who's obsessed with watching the lives of the baby mamas, big red flag. <laughs> if they're following Jada Waiter. Ari, <laughs> Chris, Chris on Rock, but because they develop with something what we call main character syndrome, they look at the females as the star, and they believe being the baby mama is the reason why income comes in. They don't realize some of these women, like for example, they'll look at, they'll arguably Ari is a bigger celebrity. Then Moneybag Yo. Mm. Moneybag Yo is rapping. <laughs> He's been through war and shootouts. Like, this guy has to have, like, he, he got to perfect his craft of, of, of being a musician. All she got to do is twerk on a couch in a club. It's viral. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and I'm going to give you some OG advice. Who am I in a relationship with? You don't know. You've never met her. There's no photos of her out there. She's not on social media. I've always kept my relationships private. Well, I see no reason for my personal life to come out in the public. You know, I mean, Tyler, the creator, recently said that on the Rap Radar podcast. He said, Internet's a weirdos, man. I don't, I don't let out my personal life. You know, I, I'm not gay, by the way, in case people want to make that little. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my relationship is with women. But what I'm saying is. That's your personal life. Keep that shit personal. Any woman who I've ever been with who doesn't respect that, I just don't want to be with them. I, well, that's a, that's another thing. A lot of these women, I'm telling you, I think we're in, we're in the era of this like social social media and clout. I was watching a Stephen A. Smith interview one time, and he said that any woman he's with has to respect the fact that he'll never be known for being with her. And... He, she's not going to be on his arm everywhere. Right. Like, he's usually seen solo. Yeah. These chicks nowadays, man, I'm telling you, man, like. Not yo, every chick. Not yeah, every yeah, chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, you're not, right. You're right. It's, it's not every chick. Not but, every but chick. Maybe the ones I'm catching. Let me tell you. Which, they all which, think. Which, they which all I'm going to say, is, as, as someone who's older, I'm going to be 50 in a couple of weeks. As you got to deal with these younger 20. Well, well, not, man, like, listen, these younger listen. 20 year old chicks. I, I've, I've always, I've always dated younger women, not, not in the 20s, but yeah. I'm saying like, I've always dated younger women, but I'm saying, yo, it doesn't matter. It comes down to the character. That is, it comes down. That there's is a 19 year old who is fine. Not being on social media is worried about her career and, and is just happy to have a good man in her life. That is, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Who's not, that. doesn't want all that extra shit. I'm you see what I'm that, saying? Man. And so, so what I'm saying is just look for a different caliber of women. That's all I'm saying. And I bet you, if you take my advice, you're going to have a happier life. Yo, that's why I'm developing red flags. I can, I can spot it quickly. <laughs> okay. Any chick who like Christian Rock is over. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be asking these things the first time I meet you. Right. You eat our Cheetos? You know Christian Rock? <laughs> all right, we out of here. We out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about it. <laughs>
Zion Williamson is in a a somewhat similar situation as you. Uh, hell no, nah. his shit worse. Nah, his nah, shit nah. worse? No, no, his shit. Listen, listen. I, I I had a girlfriend who just don't know how to act. You get what I mean? And also because of jealousy and obviously some infidelity on my part, she is like doing expo. Like I, I guess maybe that's similar. Yeah. Zion was just paying for pussy. Like he had a prostitute relationship with a woman or like a, a, some escort relationship because he literally in the text message said, oh, I want this to stop being, he's trying to wife of a prostitute. You know what I mean? Now, again, I'm assuming, right? But in the messages, he says, I want this to be more than transactional. Transactional usually means you give me something, I'm giving you something. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, he announced that he uh, is having a baby with IG model uh, Akima. Uh, he's 22. She's 29. She has a child. What's interesting about her, though, is that if you go to Queen's Flip YouTube channel, there's a video of her fist fighting with another girl and like a titty is popping out. And she's like, I think she slams the girl's I head. I told these women not to be women no more. Yo, yo women fight more than niggas. Yo, it's crazy. It's crazy that someone... Well, and, and here's the thing. Like, listen, men are men. Like, I get it. Like, you know, like I, I've said, I've, I've probably been with a thousand women throughout the course of my life. You know what I'm saying? So I, I've had experience with every caliber of women from, from the highest educated professional to the, you know, to the deadbeat, <laughs> like, you know, b b borderline homeless, you know, barely scraping by, you know, drug addicts, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've done it all. Like, you know, I've had the whole, the whole spectrum of, of the female population. But my thing is, is that like, okay, you, you got this chick pregnant. She's got videos of, of, of her titty popping out as she's slamming a girl's head into a wall. Just keep it quiet. You know, you have to have this whole he public. Huh? Oh, I mean, listen, it's a place. He didn't really do nothing. Well, he, he had a whole photo shoot with her announcing her pregnancy. Yeah, because I think he was trying to be a good father. <laughs> like, you, Well, you don't have to be. You being a father has nothing to do with a photo shoot. Okay. Yeah, Shout like, out to Nick Cannon. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, no, <laughs> I'm saying yeah, like yeah. having a photo, an op, a photo op doesn't mean that you're a good father or that means that you're a provider. Hey. You're just having a goddamn photo shoot. Vlad, Vlad, you know, if Vlad. you know, listen, if you know that you are having a, a plethora of a bunch of other women on the side and you're doing this photo shoot and suddenly, because she's not the only one, Mariah was not the only one that came out. This other girl came out and showed a picture of him man. lying in bed. And man, Vlad, women just, feel a certain type of way when they have a successful man who just got someone else pregnant while, while they nah, were fucking we on We gotta them. keep a call a spade a spade, man. And some of these scallywags, like, they, they gotta learn to deal with, like, listen, y'all all getting cheated on. Let's just be honest. Like, <laughs> y'all look up to Beyonce in every way, but when y'all get cheated on, y'all, Beyonce, well, she didn't expose Jay-Z, but she did yeah. a song version. She wasn't like, yo, here's a picture of his asshole. Like, <laughs> yo, y'all like, chicks need to learn to deal with that a little bit better. Like, these girls is like, they're so emotional. Like, I'm not saying that it's, it's cool that he should be fucking up with all these girls, but listen, you know what's, what, what, what type of guys you get with. These women want to deal with the guys at the highest level. Even the Mariah Mills girl, she literally said she's calling him a fat fuck with a short dick. And then she's literally obsessed with him, tweeting about him for the whole week. Mm -hmm. Why are you dealing with that guy? You're probably dealing with that guy because of who he is and what money he has. Yeah. That comes, it comes with a lot of shit. Yeah. He might be dealing with another woman. Now, here's the thing. Like, why are you looking to that guy if you care so much about um, just having a guy who's not going to cheat. You know what I mean? I, like, I can't get, understand all this on the, uh, on the woman's side. Okay, you fucked up the relationship with him. Maybe for some OnlyFans subscribers. I'm talking about Mariah Mills girl. Mm -hmm. The other girl who having the baby with him, well, you know now it's going to be a strained relationship with you through the pregnancy, and he's not going to be around for the kid as much because of how you're acting. Wait, what, what do you mean? Like, I think, I, I, is he with this woman? He's not with the, the other woman. He's not with none of them. Well... I mean, he did a whole photo. He did a photo shoot with her, and you know, they're they're all hugged up on each other. I mean, whatever that means, I don't know what it means. You know, and listen, at at the end of the day, man, I think, yo, I look at all these women and they be trying to expose dudes, and I'm like, yo, what's the end game for y'all? Like, he's still gonna be making forty million a year. <laughs> um, we're gonna forget about this by two months from now. 
You're going to be right. on the outside looking in. Yeah. Maybe you gave some OnlyFans followers. I just don't get it. Yeah, I mean, and he did nothing wrong. He's a 22-year-old single like, man. I mean, peace, man. You know what I'm saying? He he's My he's only problem with it was that, somebody. like, like, listen, for $30 million, I think you could get some bad adventures. Like, right. those, little, those are the bottom of the barrel. It was a little disappointing. Yeah, those yeah. are the bottom of the barrel oh, well, let me tell type you, I, I know, I know about some other chicks that he's fucking in. You're like, her? Yeah, what? Come on, man. Huh? Hey, 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 put it like this. It's like some Tiger Woods shit. Remember all the mistress came out? You're like, her? Yo, what? Yo, yo, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Like, obviously, you know, we all know black men don't cheat. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> let's say LeBron was getting a little something on the side. We obviously know this ain't true because LeBron would never do some shit like this. If he was, uh, I would bet, and I'm not wishing that it, it, it ever happened because she seems such like a great woman. Savannah don't seem like the person to be online exposing LeBron. Whatever it is, they're going to handle it within the house. And that's what I'm talking about being a woman. Like, nobody's co-signing that he, how, how some of these guys are acting, especially if they told you they're going to be faithful to you, right? We get your feelings are hurt, this and third. But th this whole new thing where, like, oh, you're exposed. I don't want to see Zion. I don't want to see Zion nowhere except on the court. Yeah. Like, this chick is posting naked pictures. Like, I don't want to see that shit. You get what I mean? So it's like, or oh, maybe just his too close to home because I don't like people exposing nothing. Yeah. But in reality, like I, I look at all these women, I'm like, yo, I, I, just, I just can't see the end game in it for y'all. And at the end of the day, it's just gonna it's gonna pass. Like what we've realized, and it even starts with me. Us men gotta start treating our dick with more respect <laughs> because in reality, like we fucking the bottom of the barrel, loud mouth, love to fight, naked online ratchet horse like they like it's almost it's it's an indictment on 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 us not valuing ourselves right so it's like well you don't value yourself enough to get like a woman who has some like some decorum about herself that know how to carry herself and won't embarrass you even at the very worst of times imagine imagine vanessa bryant when kobe was fucking like whatever girls on the road and eventually caught a case yeah Colorado. If, Imagine if her was like, yo, Kobe, you bitch, and like just tweeting all type of weird <laughs> shit like that. No, they got kids. Here's his balls. Like. Yo, yo, exactly. Yo, yo. <laughs> like, Back then, there was no social media. Yeah. Yo, but, the, what, 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 what did she do? You think she wasn't fucking hurt, distraught? Yeah. She sat right by that man. And while that dude was issuing a tearful apology. Yeah, and he, I'm he pretty bought sure her they, a big ass ring, though. No, no. Like, yeah, he but, but here's the thing. Big ass Whatever ring. argument they had. Yeah. It probably got nasty and probably got really toxic yeah, for a bit. I'm sure. Private. Yeah. And we like the majority of women we're seeing now, the 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 thing they see as the quickest thing to monetize is fame. So they're always trying to tell a story. And I, I don't know why. I, I just kind of look down on it. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. The dude likes chicks that yo. I, apparently, the chick looked like she, the, the, the the chick is um. I, I can't remember what I was trying to say, but but like. That's his type of girl? Cool. Like, he's not he's not smashing the girls that I would be into. But he's a 23-year-old dude. He's not even playing half the time. Of course he's going to be fucking 10 girls. Like, he, of course. That's part of rehab. Of course. Like, like what do we think he's going to be doing? So there's nothing that's shocking. The only thing is that, like, um, I, I just feel like you know, he was gaming up a porn Like, you can't game up a porn star. Like, you know, that was crazy. No, man. I've always said, like... You know, the one thing I learned very early on is regardless of what happens, always treat the woman well. Never let her leave mad. Fix it. If you're, even if you feel you're 100% the right, you humble yourself and you apologize, you, you, you overspend on her, you, you keep a smile on her face, you make sure that the way she came in, she's better off when she leaves. You you add, you add, and you don't subtract. You know what I'm saying? You put her up on game. You help her out with, with whatever things she's going through, financially, uh, emotionally, intelligently, and so forth. And if you follow that steps, of course, there's going to be some fucked up people out there. And I've, I've dealt with like, some crazy You talking about women. a woman. These are scallywags, man. But, but like, even these, the, these, but, but these, these are, are the bottom all, of the nah, barrel but these are all humans. But these are all humans, right? And if, Plan, you, if, you deal, if you deal with humans, and most people, most humans are good people. And if you come into that, and, and listen, and people will nah, disappoint you. Bad. Really? <laughs> No, let me tell you. There would be no society no, no, if, more, if most humans were not generally good people. That girl, 
she, she was always, it, there was no amicable end. She was always going to do some shit like this. It was not, just not necessarily. Hey, listen. Hey, 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 hold on. Okay, listen. I know we've been dealing with each other. We've been getting kind of close, but you know something? You know, instead of you finding out on social media, they got a baby on the way, I'm going to tell you that I got a baby on the way privately in a conversation. And I'm going to buy you a car because I know there's probably a certain level of hurt and so forth because, because you know, the way we've been talking and so forth, I'm, I'm going to take care of you because I'm sitting on tens of millions of dollars and a car ain't shit. I'm going to, I'm going to, I owe you a thousand. Still running her mouth, man. Nah, 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 no, no, bitch, no, man. no, 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 man, I'm telling you, I've had ratchet bitches. You, been, you got some ratchet bitches in your town? Man, I've had man. ratchet. Everyone has ratchet bitches. Ratchet bitches is not a geographical location. It is man, worldwide. I'm telling you, man. They're she, all around the world. She got T Mobile. She I see those all day. <laughs> and I'm man, telling you, she even loved, the team, I, I checked her follow. She followed Krishan Rock. It was over the T Mobile. T Mobile, Krishan Rock, Hot <laughs> Cheeto women at, yo, at the I'm, bottom of the barrel. Like, yo, you will still be able to. To reason with a person and make them and make them feel valued and make them feel respected and so forth. Now, but but you know, when you have a knee-jerk reaction where you suddenly find out that this person who you might be pregnant with, because she's saying she might be pregnant, is suddenly pregnant with another with another fucking Last baby. She's a porn star. <laughs> Yo, she's a porn star. Like, what are we talking about? Porn star, listen to no, me, man. man. What are you talking about? So you mean to say the porn stars don't end up getting married and having Relationships. Lad, what I'm saying is that they're not they, human. No, no. What I'm saying is that put it like this: Are they robots? No. Uh, what, 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 what? All right. So, so, so let me break down what, what I've seen in the situation. And in every exposal situation, usually the one who's doing the exposure, usually the woman is doing all the talking. He hasn't said a word. Yeah. So we're assuming everything she's saying is true. If you ask me, none of those text messages says he was ever in any type of monogamous relationship with her. He even says, he, he says, hey, listen, she blurred out certain words like he was trying to either pay her more, do more, that it could po possibly be in her benefit to stop messing with other dudes. But it was already implied that she was still messing with other dudes. Mm. Like, you have no leg to stand on. She's making it seem like she was in some relationship or he was lying to her. Most like he's saying transactional, like that's what the messenger okay. saying. Let, 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 She's let, gonna let, let, act like okay. they're together. Okay. okay, he can't go be like I know the team PR is telling him. No, 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 no yo, no. you can't okay. be going back and forth with a thought. Come on okay. now, bro. Let me break it down to you financially, okay? Because if it's transactional, it's about the transaction, right? Ultimately, but let me let me break it down to you financially, okay? Just just bear with me here. Okay. You got this guy in your life. He's giving you money for sex. Okay. okay? You find out he went and had a baby with someone else. He didn't tell you you're shocked and you're hurt. So you well, react. Stand on. No, no, hold on, hold on. You react and you some you burn the house down, right? Now, from that point on, you can't get a hold of him. He's gonna change his number, he's gonna block you on social yeah. media, and you will never get another penny out of this man for the rest of your life. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Unless he's just so unbelievably strung out on you sexually that he just needs another piece of you. Yeah, yeah. Like he's going to find some other chick to fuck on yeah. that's going to make him come and whatever else. Right. But whatever money that you've gotten from this man completely stops yeah. forever. Now, if I was Zion and I knew this was, if I, if I understood this whole play, I would, Go to this woman and say, listen, I got a baby and I know it's a little bit shocking, whatever else, but I'm going to keep giving you more. If you don't put me on blast, I will keep financially supporting you and we could keep doing our thing and you could keep making more money with me because that's really what every what Vlad, she's there for. You can't negotiate with us, man. I'm telling you. I agree to disagree. No, no, no. No, well, 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 no, I, no, I hear what you're saying. By the way, you're giving good advice in, in principle. What I'm mm -hmm. trying to tell you about the people who do these exposals, because I've had mad girls. Like, there's a round, round table of eight girls who tried to expose me one time. <laughs> Here's the thing. Half of the stories were fabricated. Okay. Like, you know what I actually believe this is? I think he cut her off months ago. I, I think all this shit is old. I'm looking at it. I'm telling you, I know the other side of it. He's not going to come out and say anything. The team's telling him, shut the fuck up, lay low. 
He can't come on and be like, this yeah, he, bitch is lying. Yeah, he just donated 250000 to some school yeah. and he's trying to, trying to get yeah. some positive press. Yeah, yeah. Yo, trust me. He can't come out and just say, she's lying. Of course I not. promise you she's lying. He's not, not, it was never in, it, he hasn't dealt with her in a long time. This was her moment to get fame. I'm telling you, I've had girls who I, I stopped dealing with a while ago and say, say, say there's a girl situation that comes up. They'll come up and, and try to connect themselves to it because if they want to extract some fame. It's happened. Yeah. So I'm telling you, like, I would bet, I'd bet 100,000 that they're, they weren't continually fucking or dealing with each other till that thing came up online. He cut her off months ago. He cut her off. He's not been fucking with her. Maybe he texts her from here and there, but he, he, they don't have a relationship like that. She's playing it to the public like they do that she's so hurt. And every woman is going to be like, well, I understand being hurt. I guarantee it's not like that. I promise you. Yeah, I mean, if it yeah. was like that, if it was like that, she would have. The first instinct is, isn't to be tweeting and trying to like, she's, she's literally just cloud farming. She would have at least tried to deal with him privately. And even though she claims he's been hitting her up, come on now. Stop it. You've been tweeting about the guy trying to, like, every, you're doing it for interactions. You're doing it for OnlyFans subscriptions. I could tell that you probably ain't fucking with the guy. I'm telling you. The, yeah, the, the I, thing I, is, I know, the man. thing is, it's entertainment I, I for us. Yeah. We don't care what the truth is. Yeah, we, we don't this, care. You're right. You're right. But, you know, but what I'm saying is. That's what is, I'm saying. Like, oh, okay, if, but, but, if you but, try but, to pay a girl off like that, she always going to have it over you. It's like when, when, when um, Kevin Hart, when they said they had a tape of him, they were trying to. The um, um extorting for mad long. You have to say, yo, there's a tape of me fucking some bitches, man. Like, like I'm not gonna get extorted by some hoes. Like, nah, it's over. Yeah, I've always thought that way. Like, you can't extort me. If yeah. you want to expose me, I'm gonna have to yeah. just take yeah, my on. L and keep it moving. I, and I, I've thought about you know from day one because I've always seen how these things play out. Ultimately, I'm not gonna be your slave for the rest of you. You know, your your income source for the rest of your life. Whenever you know, like, if, I'm not gonna be your personal ATM or whatever the fuck else. You know, yeah. like, yo, if I fucked up, I fucked up, and I'm gonna have to take that L. But it's not, you know. But what I'm saying is, is that if you try to proactively handle that situation in the best way possible, but financially, emotionally, you know, by kindness and everything else like that, there's a chance that it could be smoothed over. If you assume that it won't work, there's a higher chance that it won't work, so be smoothed over, right? So would you at least want a chance for it to be smoothed over? Again, I'm just Would you at of, least want a chance? No, I would, but just speaking out of people, a person who have dealt, the woman who goes online to do that, She's already, I'm telling, I promise you she's not dealing with that woman. So essentially, I, I had a girl come out um, around the same time, even recently, uh, with like my girls, something happened with my girl, and I talked about it. Another girl come, came out and, and was like, oh, she, she just made up a complete lie. Like, hey, yeah, he he wanted to give me money to fly out. Man, that's a lie. But in reality, the girl, they're on OnlyFans now. The girl want me to talk about it. The girl want me to, like, you got pages tagging me. Bro, these six liars, man. I'm, I'm yeah. being honest. If it's a liar, it's a liar. But a lot of times, there's if there's actual truth in it, that all I'm saying is, all I'm saying as an OG, as someone who's going to be 50, I'm going to be around half a century. You and got, I've been I, through. I, I, I think about I, it like this. What I've been through. Listen, listen, man. Listen, yeah, future is not a great example. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, act, I've been with a lot more women than you. Not because one of us is more good looking than the other. I'm just older. And yeah. I've been sexually active yeah. since I was a teenager. So I have just dealt with this a lot longer than you have. You see what I'm saying? So I'm giving you some OG advice into all the young men who are watching. Me and TK Kirkland do this when we do our interviews. We try to show you the wisdom of being on, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a guy that married my high school sweetheart and that's all I know. Like, no, I've been with a lot of women throughout the course of my life and I've seen this play out. And I've seen what happens when they're angry, and I've seen what happens when they're not angry, and I've seen my role in this. And at the end of the day, if you treat someone good and you really, you really do your best with that person, they're much less likely to try to get a level of revenge back on you. You see what I'm saying? And that's all I'm saying, and I'm not going to talk about it anymore. This, this is my stance, and I'm sticking to it. Now, I, now I hear you on yeah. that. I hear you on that. I, I, I'm just telling you, there's another side of that coin, man. I, I know, but I've, and I've seen that side also. But I'm saying, but that side could be smoothed over a little bit. Like, let, me, let me say this one thing, too. <laughs> you see, once you, you put it in the air, like, like okay, 
I'm it, it's like it's like when you start paying out settlements. Mm-hmm. Oh, lawsuits is coming left, the right, and center. You get what I mean? When, when, when Depends a, when on a, settlement. Okay. Depends on the settlement. If you're giving out million dollar settlements, then yeah. But if you're giving out a settlement of a few thousand dollars, everyone's going to look at it and say that ain't worth my time. Okay. So so, so, so let, let, let's go by what you said. I'm speaking from experience. All right. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing you would have said that he should have prevented all this. He could have prevented. Absolutely. Okay. Let's say he hits you on the side right now and he says, yo, all right, listen, man, I'm going to buy you a car, either retract it, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's five more of the girls coming out. Like everybody's trying to get a piece of this. Like, yeah, but Mariah Mills is the worst out of the bunch. Yeah, but that's what you, I'm telling you, you can't negotiate you with You know what I'm saying? It's like the, terrorists. You can't negotiate with thoughts. Okay. Like, I'm telling you, they're not reasonable beings, bro. Okay. I'm telling you. Okay, I got you. I got Yo, you. these are ratchet thoughts, man. Uh, let me ask you a question. Here, here's, a, here's a quiz question. Uh, a hip-hop quiz. A hip-hop, uh, well, we'll just say it's a hip-hop quiz. Yeah. Who is the greatest NBA young boy fan of all time? And when I say that, the one who will sacrifice the most for NBA young boy and his love for his music. Ooh, that's that's a who's the biggest fan? It's gotta be a rhetorical question. Like it's not a rhetorical question. Who would be the biggest fan? Someone that you know. Not personally, but you know who he is. Like the answer should be obvious. I don't know who. John Morant. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> John Moran has sacrificed more for NBA Youngboy than anyone else yo, on this earth. Yo, you know what's so crazy? After losing $39 million for waving a gun on social media, he was jamming out to NBA Youngboy so hard that he had to pull a pistol out again and yo. wave it, wave it around to show how much of a super fan he was. Let me tell you how stupid John Moran is. <laughs> NBA Youngboy's new contract is like $40 million. Yeah. To record like five albums. Yeah. You get what I mean? You lost $40 million. Try to be like NBA young boy. Right. He's made, he's, he need to record like five albums to get the money you just lost. Here's my thing. You love NBA young boy so much, bro, just book him to do a concert at your crib right. or you go to his crib. Like, yeah. like and you can wave around all the like, guns he wanted yeah, there privately. Yeah. <laughs> That's my, my thing with, like, he comes across like, you know, they, they, they always say that there is a, you know, basketball players want to be rappers, rappers want to be basketball players. But he's like, he's the living example that, of, uh, of, I, I think in his head he's a thug. Like, like he gangster. Like, he really, I think he's cosplaying as, like, this gangster that he, he wants to be young boy. Yeah. Or he wants to be the perception of young boy. Of course. So he listens to young boy's music, and I guarantee if you ask him, he probably like, yeah, young boy's killer. He want to be a killer. <laughs> you get what I mean? My thing is, I, I've said this before with John Moran. I don't like how people keep blaming everybody around him. I would be tight. If I'm around, I'm like, first of all, we don't tell this dumb motherfucker to pull out a gun every 20 seconds. We ain't tell him to do it. Like, yo, as soon as, like, to keep it real, it's like a magnet. We pull our phones out, he pull a gun out. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it ain't our fault. It's stupid motherfuckers. Right, because I, I remember with that first video, I was, like, one of the first hip-hop outlets to break it. Because I remember someone tagged me. It's like, Vlad, do your thing. And I, I'm watching the video. Since no one else would really report on it yet, I'm like, okay, let me watch this frame by frame to make sure that's a gun before I say it's a what, gun. What, what, the second one? The second one. You know, and I'm Crazy like, we got to say the second one. I'm like, yo, that's a gun. Like, there's no way around this. And, and I remember I did a post and I showed his man. I'm like, yeah, the look, the look on your face when you just lost your man tens of millions of dollars. But then I looked at the video again and I'm like, no, 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 wait, no, wait. I'm blaming the wrong person. I'm blaming the wrong person. Because before the gun got pulled out, the phone was already out on IG Live and Josh sticks his head in the face, you know, sticks his face all on the screen, yo, yo. knowing he's on live, and then pulls out a gun. Hey, 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 listen. And, and it's it, not his man's fault. Hey, l l let, me, right, let me tell you this. John Morant, and, and I hope this is, uh, uh, niggas better not tag on this like this extension. John Morant has what they call a Finsta. So a Finsta is like a, it's like a private Instagram. Okay. So he has like 10 million people who follow him on his main account. He has like an account literally with like 50 followers. Hmm. Right? This boy just loves guns. Hmm. Like the celebrities, they all, there's like a private little fence to world where they all like, you know, like they have girls that kind of tap into it and shit like that. He be on the fence to act in the same way. Oh, fence that stands for fake Insta. Oh, a fake, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. He like, he just like that type of shit. You get what I mean? So, my only thing with him is like, I think he's trying to, I don't, everybody think like he's trying to be like Alan Iverson or he's trying to be like, 
you know, like um, um, Jordan. No, this boy's trying to be Aaron Hernandez. My thing is, he been showing that gun too many times. He's not using it. <laughs> like, yo, like if he listen, if he trying to be Aaron Hernandez, man, you, it's only so much you can throw up these gang signs and show your gun. Like, just what's the point? I'm at. I, I'm in a school of thought to say, it's his money. I hate when people talk about him and they say, well, oh my God, they're, they're counting his pockets. He's he's a motherfucker who once he probably saw ten million in his bank account, bro. He don't give a fuck about the rest of the money. You can't want everybody's treating like the two hundred million is their two hundred million. Hmm. He don't give a fuck about it. I think he should crash out. Do what he want to do. I don't. I, it's clear that money, like him losing money, don't 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 um don't hurt uh don't prevent him from doing what he want to do. I think he should <clears throat> listen. If that's who you are and that's your calling, <laughs> do what you want to <laughs> do. Right, because. Because of the gun incident, he never made the All NBA team, which means that he lost thirty nine million, which is ironic because you talk about NBA YoungBoy's forty million dollar deal, he lost thirty nine million. I mean, he basically paid for NBA YoungBoy's contract with with the money that he lost. It, it's it's absolutely insane to me to get busted two months ago, only to do the exact same thing that got you busted two months ago. And what makes matters worse, in my opinion, is that the official statement uh, from his team is that it was a toy gun. Yo, we need niggas like John Morant in the military. You know what I mean? Like, we, we need niggas like He's that. He's Navy SEAL. Yeah. We need niggas like that. Traveling to Ukraine, we need you know, take, like out, that. take out some Russians. We need like. as, as a Marine. <laughs> you drop him over Ukraine, I guarantee you won't wave a gun again. You feel me? Like, you, you got to put him in the right circumstance. You know what I mean? Like... Like, come on, man. Oh my God, that is hilarious. <laughs> we need him in the, the military. Field. Yeah, for real, man. Look, Listen, what's he doing in sports? Yo, that boy went to the wrong draft, okay? <laughs> They're talking about drafting for the NBA. They need to bring back the draft and just put him in the military. That's yeah. what, yo, let, yo, let, hey, he might, that might be a, a natural talent of his. You know what I mean? Again, we're, we're Wait, past the point. You, I also hate why people keep acting like it's a mental illness or like no, an addiction problem. Illness. Not he listen. His idea of being cool is playing and waving around guns. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. He has he has a um, obsession with the image that rappers portray. So he is fixated on an image that a rapper has portrayed. Except I'm just saying. Listen, I, I can't. I can't no longer excuse him and call him like a kid. Everybody's doing that, and they're calling his money, which is not in your account anyway. It's his money, which he don't give a fuck about. Let him do what he want to do, as long as nobody get hurt. So I said, those ass in the military. You know what I mean? There's a lot of like things that we like. John Moran's used for a motherfucker. We just gotta act like the NBA might not be for him. <laughs> serious. <laughs> like, he's in the wrong NBA. He needs to be with Never Broke Again. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> like, you know he's he in the wrong NBA. <laughs> he's in the wrong NBA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, he's a shooter, but he, he's, he's shooting the wrong ball. He's shooting like, the wrong ball. <laughs> he's shooting the wrong ball. I'm telling you. Hey, listen, yo, yo, John Morant. Like, listen, I know he feels conflicted when he's like, yo, I'm just having fun. Like, him growing up, he probably think that's just how him and his friends have fun. My dude. If 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 you want to crash out and give all that money back, you are entitled to do it. I have yeah. no problem with you doing that, brother. By the time this interview, well, this part of the interview comes out, the NBA finals is over, and that's when the NBA commissioner said they're going to actually rule on what they're going to do in terms of the penalty. Uh, they're saying, Wait I mean, somebody give him an AR. He's been waving these little little, <laughs> little pistols around. Wait till he get his hand on the AR. Oh, holy, <laughs> uh, Uzi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, it's probably if he got an eight, uh, an eight game suspension last time, I would assume it's going to be more severe this time, considering how yeah. how close it was in terms of. So we got to start treating like a grown man. Minimum forty five games, or a full games. season, straight up. If he get the full season, I wouldn't even be mad. Hey, it's not about you. Fuck your money. You making the league look bad. They can't, like, they don't want a dude toting guns when they got to sell sponsors. You think St State Farm want a corny nigga like Chris Paul as their representative? <laughs> right. Nobody wants gun toting John Moran. This ain't, this ain't a fucking um, John Wick movie. The fuck? <laughs> Get out of here. If you, listen, I don't care how great you ball. And, and that's what I think the league is having a problem. He is the closest in influence to young kids 
as Allen Iverson used to be. Mm -hmm. And Iverson was known for popularizing a crossover. So when you have this much, like, you know, um, influence on the kids, they don't want to penalize him too hard, but this is a hard-headed nigga. He can't learn. You got to give him the full season. Tell him to come back 2025. He'd be straight. Trust yeah, me. I mean, look, at the end of the day, you know, people are like, oh, well, you know, rappers wave around guns and whatever else. But but when you're, when you're at a, a record label, major or otherwise, you don't have a code of conduct that the NBA has or the NFL has or Major League Baseball has or whatever. These are family-oriented institutions. Of course. Codes of conduct with very specific rules, with advertisers you that do, they depend on. You do in order, shit, in order to function. The bottom line, we got to get you out of here. We got to get you out of here. The game is not bigger. You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember, who was it? Was it John Sally that, that told me that, like, you go to any NBA team, and I don't care how big of a superstar you are on that team, you're not talking to the owner. The owner... The the sports team is a is just a little side hustle for most of these owners. Their real money comes from someplace else. This is just like a little side project. So they're not going to take time out of their main business to talk to you about your qualms with, with the coach or whatever else. That's what the general manager is for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the owner. The NBA is on top of the owners. You see what I'm saying? So it's like any anyone could be replaced in the NBA, whether it's LeBron, whether it's whoever. You know what I'm saying? If LeBron starts acting a fool and starts becoming, you know, a problem for the NBA, he will get kicked out. Vlad, you, I don't you're overcomplicating it, man. All this nigga want to do is wave around a gun and do some little <laughs> girlish dance. Get him the fuck on out of here, man. Like, listen, one monkey don't stop the show. This the, the NBA, baby. Like, yeah. listen, there's another star. We watching great games. Yeah. LeBron about to retire. One monkey don't stop the show. We're going to get some more. Yeah. It's this is These leagues are built on new talented people every day coming and doing yeah. things at a finite period. You want to waste, you 23 and you want to waste the waving around guns? Cute. Sit a season out. You could dance in your living room all day. You could do your little dance, wave your guns around. You get me? Just like, I hope somebody's, you know, you know the biggest thing? Not that we know he's not using the gun. He's just showing it. But we got to make sure these guns are empty. Like, it, it, sometimes I actually feel he might shoot himself. Like, he don't even look like he know how to use a gun. So, that's my thing. Make sure all these guns are loaded. But if you want to just have a, 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 a empty gun waving around, dancing in his living room, let him sit the whole year off, man. This thing is a distraction. Here's the thing, too, which sometimes I think people and you see youth. Youth is almost an ego in itself, especially for really talented yeah. athletes, because they actually don't see that at a certain time. Father time is going to knock on that door. You won't be able to jump from the free throw line. Anymore. <laughs> right. You're it's 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 going to yeah. stop. His team had a better record without him. <laughs> so he missed a bunch of games. They had a better record without him, but he's the biggest draw. Yeah. At a certain point, you start you start subtracting more than you added. You know what happens when you wave around guns? Uh, Jason Williams, who I interviewed. Jason Williams had a whole bunch of people at his house, and he was showing off his gun collection. He was waving around his shotgun. It went off. And it shot his driver in the chest, and he went to prison. Yeah. So he lost years of his life. A man that didn't do anything to nobody died right there in his room. He tried to jump in the pool and try to get the residue off of him and, you know, try to get one of his friends to say they, 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 they did it and whatever else and so forth. And I'm interviewing Jason, and he's in tears. Nah, nah, he's literally nah, nah. crying. Yeah, I, I was, was really good. He's crying, talking about this situation because of how bad he feels. When the gun went off and, and he got hit, what was the first thing that started going through your mind? Because obviously it was an accident. What, what the hell just happened? Yeah. It was, it, bam! And I, what the hell just happened? And then I, and I just panicked. And... Well, you said you try to cover it up. Like, how did you try to cover it up? I went and jumped in the swimming pool and then stood there. And when the police were coming, um, we were trying to come up with a story instead of, you know, just telling the truth of what happened, just in shock. And when the police come, it was obviously, you know, that I was reckless. And that's what I went to jail for.
I'm assuming that the gun, this not a, not the toy gun that he's he's pretending it is. It's an actual real gun. I don't see a reason for anyone to take an unloaded gun out of their house. There's zero reason for that. So I'm assuming you're waving around a loaded gun in a car full of people, jamming out to NBA young boy, clearly not as lucid as you should be. If you accidentally pull that trigger and it shoots your man in the head, you're going to be right there crying like Jason Williams. Your career will be done. A 100%. You will go to prison. 100%. Yo. And you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. Yo, if I'm a young boy, I'm like, yo, thank God for this stupid motherfucker. This nigga promoting my music better than I ever could. Oh, my God. He's dancing to my music every single time he's on camera. Like, <laughs> like he's, I kid you not, there's two songs he was dancing to while waving a gun. I had to look it up. I, I like young boy. I didn't even know the songs. I'm like, shit, these songs is fire. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yeah. listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I'm one of Drake's biggest fans, but ain't no Drake song make me just start doing a, like crazy shit like that. No, Yo, give me the gun, Drake song. Give me the gun. Like, no, nothing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> like, and, and in the words <laughs> of, of my man, Tony Yayo, who is a regular on my show, who has had more situations with guns than anyone ever should in the course of their life. He's had his mom's uh, house shot up during, during the beef. People have died and gotten killed. You know what I'm saying? There's been there's been shootouts that he was involved with and everything else like that. He said, it's a gun, it's not a toy. You don't put a dress on it and you don't play with it. Playing with the gun, when you're from the streets, you don't play with guns. Like yeah. you don't, you know what I'm saying? It's no a gun is nothing to play with. It's not a toy. True. Okay. It's got a specific purpose, and True. that is protection. So unless you feel your life is in imminent danger. There is no reason to have a gun out. You and I are both gun owners. So people, I don't want anyone to think I'm anti-gun because I'm not. Yeah. I own multiple guns. I, own I got, I got, I got the, the cop killer bullets that open up and will fucking knock a hole in you. And I got shotguns that'll, that'll, you know, put a Frisbee in the middle of your stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. I get it. I've dealt with home invasions. I, I am very much prepared to protect my home if anybody comes in there. But you have never, ever, ever, have you ever seen any of my guns? No. Nah. And we've spent how many hours together hey, and, 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 and hung way. out and everything else like that? You've never seen any of my guns. My guns are not there for anyone else but myself. Hey, I got a prediction. I think John Moran trying to catch a case this summer. <laughs> Trust me. I probably, I'm Like, he might relish in that. I'm well, well, he had that situation with no, that no, teenager, he, remember? Yeah, he want a felony, though. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, before I let you go, man, uh, I want to say rest in peace, Jackie O, the mother of uh, DCE Young Fly's three yeah. kids. Uh, wow. Her funeral is actually today really? in Atlanta. Um, she was only 32 years old who died uh, in the middle of a mommy makeover. Well, actually, after the mommy makeover. Uh, she was in a hotel, uh, unfortunately, by herself. From what I understand, you should always have a nurse with you when, when doing these types of operations. So I'm not quite sure what, what the specifics are, but it's an absolutely terrible, terrible situation. I actually looked it up, looked it up, and the you know, the BBL mommy makeover is the most dangerous plastic surgery procedure that you could have. Uh one in three thousand people die every year from these surgeries. And it's uh it's absolutely awful in terms of what happened. And I cannot imagine on any level the conversation the DC Young Fly had to have with his kids to tell them that mommy is never coming back. Yeah, no, nah, that's definitely tough. I, I, I'm, you know, um, I, I don't know if we'll, we'll, we'll find out the the specifics of, of that situation. You know, I always wonder, is it like something that happened on Kanye's mom when, you know, Kanye's mom, like the doctor said, hey, listen, you're not a candidate for this. Well, no, 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 no. no. Yes and no. The the doctor, because there was an interview with the doctor, the doctor said that she was a candidate, but she had to go through another doctor to get a pre-screening situation and so forth because of her age and her weight and her medical condition yeah, and so she forth. Skipped it. She skipped it, went to another doctor that didn't require that and ended up dying Yeah. afterwards. Yeah, um, that, that could have caught possibly, hey, listen, don't do this. Or, you yeah, know, possibly, possibly. But she she wanted to, to speed things up. I mean, in this particular situation, I don't know. I, I do know that I looked up this doctor. His name was Dr. Zach. And he has sued multiple women who left negative reviews yeah. about his work 
on these uh, public forums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. which to me sounds very fishy. You know, someone who's trying to create an image that they do perfect work every time and, and they sue people and, hey. and try to bully them. You know, those lawsuits were ultimately dropped. So the fact that they, he was trying to sue people because they didn't have a good experience with him is some fuck shit as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I'll, I'll definitely say, you know, you, listen, you know, I, I, I get body shamed all day online. <laughs> you get what I mean? Shit, my man, Bam Man Kevo, he said, yo, act. He said, he said, I wanted to, he said he wanted to pay for like, lipo for like five males like yeah. celebrities and i was like brother you know what man i'm either gonna keep being fat this whole time or i'm gonna lose it naturally but i'm not getting under that knife and i'm not getting nothing sucked out of me pause um i've always just thought those unnecessary surgeries um especially if you're not already having a healthy lifestyle you put yourself at risk but when you look on social media these surgeries are glamorous like Dr. Miami's on TikTok, like playing, all, like doing dances while people is passed out off anesthesia type stuff. Like they almost make these surgeries look like, oh, go there ain't no way you could die. Go to Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, the, 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 you know, this is just like you know, uh, um, this like eye checkup or something like that. It, it, so this is a constant reminder, like, hey, listen, you know, um, I don't know the specifics of her situation, so I can't speak anything about. You know, her and obviously, you know, I send my condolences to DC Young Fly's family. Yeah, I've interviewed a man, very, very nice guy. Only, only very positive things to say about him. The only thing I, I would say, because, you know, I was reading like, you know, say Shade Room comments, and I see a lot of women, like regular women who have just regular jobs and they were like, oh my God, I have my surgery. And I'm like, listen, I wish sometimes women, you know, um, I think the reason why this BBL shit got so popular is because, you know, we're having this like unrealistic standard that women feel like they got to live up to. And again, I, I know some people going to be like, nah, like most women do it just for themselves. Cool. But oh, listen, I'm one of the people who, listen, I like natural bodies and I also like women even if they have flaws. You know, it is what it is. And um, I hope sometimes the message gets sent to the majority of women that, hey, listen, if you want to go do it, go do it. Like nothing wrong if you want to go do it. But also love yourself too. Like, you know, like you don't have to chase this image of perfection. Um because sometimes it's just not even worth it. Well, look, number one, if you want to lose weight, I can help you lose weight naturally. I mean, you look at me, I've lost 30 pounds. Nah, I see. Naturally. Yo, I see the old picture. Yo, I was like, yo, damn. Yeah. I like, I'll, I'll show you some pictures offline. Like I was, like, I, I was really 30 pounds heavier. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you know what I'm saying? And and, and I'll be honest, I remember Last year, sometime I actually tried Ozempic, you know, because because my that was Ozempic we go over. That's that um, uh, diabetes is that the diabetes drug that that you basically inject, uh -huh. you know, that stops you from eating essentially. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, like it's like the biggest rage right now. I tried it for a couple months and it just made me nauseous all the time. Like I was nauseous all the time and I was constipated for like a week and then you let it all out in a day. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible. And I lost a bunch of weight because you're nauseous and you're not, just not hungry. So I said, fuck this shit. You know what I mean? So everyone's like, oh, I lost his weight. So I was like, no, I tried it for a couple months, but I've, I've, if you looked at me, I've been we, off my we, weight. We, we, you got to inject yourself? Yeah, it's just a little, like, it's a little, it's like a little tube and you press a button and a little tiny little needle goes in and then like, it goes, duh, 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 and then like it injects the, the medicine the into your leg. I mean, it's actually, it's pretty easy. Like it's, Painless, essentially. But like, you know, my my cardiologist recommended it to me because for heart reasons, because it's got other benefits. Okay, 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 okay. You know, I didn't take it just to lose weight. Mm -hmm. He recommended it to me for health reasons. Yeah. But I took it for a couple of months and I'm like, yo, I don't like this. So I said, fuck this. And I got back to my workout routine. I got back to my counting calories routine. And I'm back to the weight that I was off Ozempic naturally. Mm naturally it's really it's all about math you figure out how many calories you need a day in order to lose weight okay you either eat that amount of calories and stop or you could eat more but you have to make it up by losing calories by working out and you can count those calories as well if you consistently do that every day you will absolutely lose weight i'm i'm in the best shape of my life and i'm turning 50 this year you know i weigh 195 pounds i'm 62 it, it, and it's all natural. It, 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 here's the thing, though. So you see, for for men, I think see that's easier. I think for women, 
It's not even about, I see women who are skinny and petite and who look healthy, but they're like, they want a big ass. Want a big they don't ass. want to look like an ant. You're not going to work out your way into a big ass. Yeah, they, 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 they want a big ass. And then here's the thing, too. I see a lot of women who say this. They'd be like, oh, yeah, if I ever have kids, I got to go get my titties done. And listen, I'm not against plastic surgery. Like, that's fine. You, you know what I mean? If you you have one body and whatever you want to do to, you know, augment, change, modify your body or whatever else, like, it is what it is. People get haircuts. Like, people get tans. People get their teeth done. Look at everyone in hip-hop has teeth, has veneers. You yeah. know, have you, have you, do you know what veneers look like when they before they put them on? Yeah, you basically oh, have, like, true. fucking, yeah. you know, <laughs> gremlin teeth. Like, you yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? No, like, no, you no, got no, these weird. sharp little fucking crazy looking, you know, <laughs> you know, insane looking, you know, like, it, it looks crazy without the veneer. But at the end of the day, that's fine. Go to the best doctor. Don't go to the doctor that's suing people who gives them bad reviews. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've heard some other rumors well, about this doctor, which I don't want to put out there because he's obviously so happy. Well, you know what I mean? Well, here's the thing, too, though. With a lot of these doctors, so when I, when I go to Miami, like, I pretty much film a lot of my episodes in Miami. When I'm coming back from Miami, there's always like eight to ten girls in wheelchairs. And at first, I was like, "Why so many young women in wheelchairs?" BBLs. They all just got their surgery. Yeah, they got to get wheeled through the airport. So again, I think that what's happening now too is like these doctors who pretty much are all gaining their fame via mm -hmm. Instagram because they post pictures with the 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 latest influence who came to them, and everybody's like, "Who's yeah. your surgeon or whatever?" They're having they're getting so many clients now, like it's. They're probably doing rush jobs. They're probably not taking the, you know, and again, maybe this wasn't a surgeon's fault, right? Maybe this was just post-care, right? Regardless. Yeah, we, we don't know. You, you have to realize they're now turning this shit into like, it's like McDonald's. It's just like, it, it's, it's just, it's a constant wheel of, all right, you come in. Like, I'm hearing they're doing bulk BBLs now. Like, they're giving, people could get, you could get it done with your friend. Like, all in the same room. I'm like, what type well, of, yeah, but, but, but type look, of nasty because, shit is that? All right, because. Look at the the way the business is structured. There, there's no residuals for a BBL. It's not like, hey, I'm going to give you a BBL and you're going to give me $100 a month for the rest of your life. You know, you you, you get the check. Don't put that in the air, Vlad. I'm telling you, niggas will start renting the BBL. <laughs> yo, BBL, you, yo, right. yo, listen. Like, hey, you make your payment, I'm going to need it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to need it back. Yeah, that's no, going mean, to that's gonna be the next thing on my, that's right. the next thing on my, my fucking right. list. Hot Cheetos and renting a BBL. Renting right. a BBL, <laughs> right. Because look, at the end of the day, person comes in, they do the surgery, and that's it. You never get a penny from that person again unless they come back and get more surgeries, which may or may not happen. So, you know, they got to make it up through numbers, you know? And sometimes, you know, they have staff, like, you know, a lot of these plastic surgeons, like, they have, like, nurses that are doing a lot of the work for them and so forth. I'm not saying this doctor does, but I'm saying, like, everyone wants to grow a business. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to make more money than they made last year. And, you know, and this is why... You know, it's so dangerous to go out of the country because a lot of times doctors who lose their license in America will go to the, go to DR and continue to practice. You know what I mean? This is where the horror stories come in. You know, or you know, or sometimes you'll go to some third world country, you'll wake up without a kidney. Yo, I think people also don't don't realize. Hey, listen, as you're aging too, like some of these surgeries, like it's hard to keep up with, or you got to go like twenty different times back. Look at Black China recently. She just been she's been on a mission to get everything out of her body. Yeah, she's trying to. She's go. Angela White now. She's no yeah. longer Black China. Yeah, she she's trying to get. And really, you know, if you remember when the saga with her and Rob, she basically came out and said, "Yo, man, like the surgeries were having, like there were it was like botched on top of botched, and then she was trying to fix. She fixed one thing, but then this looks crazy. Yeah. And and I, I think it was just a very unhappy period of her life because she was like in this constant phase of chasing. And um, shoot, you know, I. I she looks the happiest she's ever looked now. Yeah, but on the flip side, nobody would know who she was if it wasn't for those surgeries. So so you could say, oh, I was so unhappy and I was sad or whatever, but you're on keeping up with the Kardashians. Hey, you have an income because of those surgeries, right? This right? Is the only, yeah, you're right. The, the, the only thing I be saying is like, listen, if you're going to get a BBL, man, make sure you're trying to fuck a ball player or a rapper. I see chicks with a BBL working as a receptionist, man. Like, this shit don't make no sense. And if, like... Like women, regular women that work nine to fives are just getting their body done. My thing is this: there's nothing wrong with that because these, man, if you all don't get a body kit, man, at least at least go 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 get the like you got to upgrade everywhere else, man. You can't be fucking on the local 
dope boy. No, you're right. Come you're on, right. Yeah, man. Well, most, yeah, m- most girls, yeah, who who do get BBLs usually get a better boyfriend after. Yeah, like you, you know, know what I mean. Like, I've definitely seen that. I'm definitely, they're basically like, yeah, I ain't going to let some regular dude just fuck on all this body I just spent all this money on. You know what I mean? I, I'm trying to get a better class of women. And, you know, they do attract a better class of man, you know, or or a man that, you know, is into that type of thing. Not everyone's into those, that type of body. But plenty of men obviously are, which is why plenty of women get these type of surgeries. Hey. Listen, I'm not against plastic surgery. I'm not shaming anybody. Obviously, you know, are the um, few rap friends I got, like a bunch of them, like they take pride in buying, they, like they'll tell me, like, yeah, I bought her titties. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm not doing that. Like, shit, because I'm definitely not going to have her bouncing them titties in front of a nun nigga when, when she eventually leaves me. Like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not even getting a down payment. This is over. Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, listen, man, but you, I'm going to tell you once again, I'm going to come back with my OG advice as someone who's been around the block a few more times than you have. And you may think at a certain point in your life that you have a type, right? You probably in your head. No, I got a type right now. That's you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, you say you have a type. It might change, right? There's going to be someone, like you're saying right now, I'm into natural bodies. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not into BBLs. I'm not into fake titties. I'm not into this. There's going to be someone you're going to meet at one point that's going to have that, and you're just going to be blown away by that person. And then you're going to think about it differently. You know what I mean? You may be into black girls. There's going to be an Asian girl that's going to come around at some point that's just going to, oh, shit. I never, I've never, you know, I've never realized that I'm into Asian women like this because you just haven't, a lot of it is based on experience and, you know what I'm saying, and exposure. You know, with me, I've always dated black women. You know because, so black? Well, because my first relationship in college was with a black and Asian woman. You know what I'm saying? And that, that set of precedence. But over time, I realized I'm not just into this. I'm into all women. Nah, I fucked a, I fucked a bitch with a, with, a, with a botch BBL or like whatever it was back then, man. Like I felt like I was hitting cement, man. It shit almost threw up my right, pelvis. Right, with a botch BBL, but there's going to be someone that, out there. That's why I'm fucking with, with that shit, right, man. Right, right, because you've had a bad, it's all based on experience, what I just said, right? Well, I need hip but, surgery but, but, but you, that But you're going to meet someone that's going to have a BBL It's going to be like, God damn, this is incredible. Like, I, I like BBLs now. You know what I mean? And because and, and the, the thing is, it's all people and there's someone attached to that BBL. There's a human being attached to that. And there's a personality attached to that. And there's caring. And there's conversation. Well, 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 I usually and, and there's intelligence. Them. If I see you with a BBL, I already think you're superficial. I'm like, yo, you, yo, you walking around with a body kit. Like, what are we talking about? Like, you know what I mean? It also comes across that you're lazy. Like, you ain't want to hit the gym. Like, not saying I'm not lazy too, but shit. Like, it, 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 I judge you a lot off you having a BBL. Okay. You're superficial, probably lazy as shit. And you probably out here fucking for nothing. Okay, let's just be honest. So all for those three things, I know you're probably you're, you're going to be in the sex zone, the cat girl. And this has been your and this has been your experience. Yeah. And it's it's you know it makes sense why your experience has been like this. But as you have more experiences and you meet more people, you're going to see that things are going to change and your tastes are going to change. And the only reason I'm saying this is if you put on your blinders. When it comes to relationships, and you, you you're not married, you don't have a family, you, whatever else, you know, because ultimately you're looking. Everyone is looking for like their life partner. You know what I'm saying? Everyone's looking for the person that could be their everything, and they really want to settle down with, and everything else like that. If you keep your blinders on to only what you think you like, you will end up missing some potential people in your life that could really change your life. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, 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 of course. Well, when it comes to that, it's, it's more about, see, that's not a BBL or not BBL question. That's about, hey, if you meet somebody you have a connection with, that's the most important thing. 100%. Right, but if you don't even, if you look at that person and say, that's not my type, and you never even bother to try to set up a connection with that person, which, and, which is what most men do, and, and right? Just, I'm not speaking from a, from a mountaintop. I'm saying I was like this throughout most of my life as well. But as time went on, I realized that, oh, you know, I, you know, at, at certain points I was meeting people. I was like, oh, I never thought I was into a person like you, but I actually am. And I'm glad that I gave this person a chance because this person ended up being, a, you know, a meaningful relationship for me. You know, I, I really like, I mean, listen, growing up, I didn't think I was into black women because the school I went to didn't really have a lot of black women in my school. But then I went to UC Berkeley and it was more of a mixed 
You, you know, know what I mean? They say, once you go black, you can't go back black. <laughs> you can't go black, man. That's how it goes. Once you go white, it just feels right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's you know that's what he's saying. Man. You know what I mean? But hey, once I went to Berkeley and I was exposed to different types of women, it just so happened that the first girl I ever fell in love with in my life just happened to be black and Japanese. And but I wasn't looking for that. I wasn't saying this is my type. This is what I'm into. You know what I'm saying? It just happened yeah, no, to no, be. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm open minded. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm definitely open minded. I, I just know when certain type of chicks. Psst, listen, I'm, I'm a little jaded by this, and this why I can't. I can't date no people. Always say. They'll ask me, like, you know, certain people, like, in the industry. Like, I've actually had, like, a few of some of these, which I really think, you know, you know, female rap is, like, the new thing. Some of these girls coming up, I, I, I really don't think they really wanted me, but they'll shoot their shot. I think they just want to get on the platform, but whatever. But I'm not even attracted to the girls in this industry because they all fucking everybody, man. Like, I, my girl got to be, like, in the middle of nowhere, like, a regular-ass girl, man. I can't even deal with, I'm running to girls in this industry, man, all these chicks. Right. I don't know. Imagine if Jay-Z thought like that. Well, he listen, wouldn't he wouldn't have been. These married. bitches ain't no Beyonce, man. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I swear. Hey, listen, I leave no so that, yo. But but if you have hard fast rules, you would have passed by Beyonce. You see what nah, I'm saying? Beyonce, Beyonce wasn't moving like how these scallywags is moving. I'm telling you, <laughs> yo, I follow this one girl, I swear, every week she's on a private jet with another dude. She fucking on, I don't even call the rapper's name. She fucking five rappers same time. And all the rappers know it. Like, those type of girls, I, can't, I could never wife the hell. That's what I'm saying. Like, most of them girls, like, when we talk about BBL, I only see them in the industry. When I go to my local grocery store around where I live at, I don't really see, I see regular looking people. Like, but, but I, again, I don't live in, like, some, like, L.A. or Hollywood. Or I live rural place where you see normal people. You know what I mean? When I, when I go to BBL land, that's like Miami, and they're fucking everybody. I'm telling you. So I'm jaded a little bit, but, they, like, these scallywags really fucking everybody. It all comes down to character. Just I'm going to find one, though. I'm going to find one. I'm going to find one. Just because someone had some work done, have their hair a certain type of way, have their clothing well, a certain weaves. type of way. I don't fuck with weaves a wig for my main girl. I, I, don't, I don't care about weaves. Listen. I, my, I, my I've main... had girls with weaves, and I've had them grow their hair out, and they went natural. I mean, I, I don't give a shit. I honestly don't give a shit. I don't give a shit I about... I have a little hard, fast rules. Like, yeah, I don't want no shit. That's chick. what I'm saying. Now, all I'm saying is those hard, fast rules are going to ultimately make your future a little bit harder. I don't want no chick with no fucking crazy glue on her forehead. I ain't not working with me. I wake up, I'm looking at, hell no, nah, man. I look like, it's, you looking like Shanae from Martin. I'm not doing yeah. that. Come on, man. Hell no. Nah. You know what's more, more important than that, though? Uh, having somebody who's potentially a good mother, man. Somebody character. Somebody to deal with. Yo, of character. course, character is 100%. Character. Character. Not 100%. Listen, I... I I be trying to save myself time. Anytime, anytime a chick wearing them long ass lashes, that's on the list too. Eliminated, eliminated. Like if your lash curl too much, it's over. Right. But you know something? That same woman with those lashes might be have a, a hell of a character. Might have a hell of an intelligence. Might might be able to take your business to the next level. Might be a hell of a partner. You know what I'm saying? Those are the and, rare and ones. You know, and you know something? If she loves you, she'll get those lashes taken off because she knows you don't That's like true. it. That's true. You're right. And, you'll, and, and, and maybe you'll lose some weight because she's concerned about your weight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and, and you end up getting healthy because of that relationship. And, and you know, if that, if that weave, you know, if you don't like that weave, she's like, no, no problem. Yeah. I'll grow my hair natural for you. Yeah. It, because, you know theory, what I mean? Okay, cool. Let's try it out. It's just fucking hair. Yeah. Who the fuck cares? In theory. And I'll get my BBL taken out if you don't like it too. Because Yo. you know something, I didn't like it anyways. Whatever, like it, you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's all, but but the no, character supersedes everything. I, I everything. agree with you. Everything, the character, uh, and, and, I, and I think when Kanye, in theory, you know, I agree with him when he said he said one good girl is worth a thousand bad bitches or whatever he said. Exactly, and that's definitely when when you have a woman like every time I even go through a bad situation with a chick like these days, I think about like there was there was a few. That like honestly, I fucked up on that were really good women. Like all they did was, and I was like, shit, I took that for granted. I thought yeah. I was gonna find that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now all I deal was Jezebels. You know what I mean? Headaches. You know what I mean? But you know, uh, one day, man, one day. I, I've been lucky. I have had three major relationships in my life. You know, multi-year long relationships throughout the course of my life. 
Two of them were very good people. Mm. One I fucked up on. I get it. And she's still a train wreck to this day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> One of them I fucked up on. You know, I got caught up in the sex and the, you know, all, all the shit that, that went in with that. You know, not to say that she was like a really rotten person, but clearly she was not a good partner. But two were really, really good people that I, I am so happy that I was in relationships with them. I grew so much. I learned so much. I learned how to treat women a certain type of way based on what I learned from them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for those women in my life. And, you know, although they, they, I found them very attractive and, and everything else like that, that was not, in retrospect, that was not the greatest part of our relationship was not their looks. It was their character. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I think everybody's got. It's, it's all about compatibility. Like shit. I even look at um, I, I look at Adam and like his girl. You know, did they, you know, they're compatible for each other. She has a BBL. You know. Well, I mean, shit. Does she? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. But yeah, no. no. Yeah, I mean, she, again, yeah, she, she does. Yeah. It it it, it, work, it works for them. Like the, like they just got married in Italy. I know. Like, they, this past they, their lifestyle, their lifestyle works for both of them. Yeah. And you know, I, listen. But if he had your set of rules. Well, they wouldn't even have a kid together. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Those are your rules. Yeah, the, no. Being carried Some of my to, rules to, going to have to stay, Vlad. I ain't yeah, you see what I'm saying? If those were your rules, <laughs> Some of those rules then, gotta then, stay, then, then it would have been. Adam seems genuinely happy. Nah, he do seem happy. But he that type of guy. I, I so. talk to Adam, like, all the time. Like, honestly. Like, he he is genuinely happy. I've never heard him complain about his girl to me. Yeah, yeah, no, you know right. what I'm saying. He, he they seem they, they they seem genuinely happy. They've built a business together. They have a child together, and they're true to themselves in terms of who they really are. They're honest with each other about sex and and everything else like that, and it works for them. And they've done great with it. You know what I mean? So, like I said, now if he had these hard fast rules, she would have just been a one and done. Nah, you know what I mean? Have, well, you don't know if he has like. He might have a hard, fast rule like no black girls. Like you just wouldn't see him with a black girl. Like everybody got preference. I mean, he's black. had sex with black girls. Yeah, he getting paid though, man. <laughs> you <getting> paid. <laughs> I, I don't think it's a pay thing. I think he really wanted to have sex with them. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, like I'll he's not. He's not like a. No, he's no, not, no, 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 He's I'm not gonna, a full time porn star. No, no, no. Like, he, he does porn because he wants to do porn. No, I'm making this up. I, I, right. but, but everybody has like a preference. Like like of like listen. Like I'm big already. I don't like big bitches. Like if I, we, both of us can't be big in this shit. Like come on, man. Like what yeah. we doing, man? Like we want to go to eat or what we want to do? <laughs> the only thing we could do to get is go to a buffet. We can't do nothing else. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean I'm not. In a, have a I'm, not, I'm not in the big girls either, right? Um, Drake was lying when he never, said he was in the big yeah, girls. You never seen big girls. I, I've never been into really, really like big girls. Although I have messed around with a few over the years. Yeah, never been in relationships, but you know what I'm saying. But that's not to say that there's not someone out there who is just such a dope person yeah, yeah. that I could get past that because I can, you know what I mean? And as I'm getting older, you understand that more. It becomes more, more clear. You know what I mean? So that's where we're going to end it. Academics, yeah. always it's a pleasure. Till next man. time. Till next time, man. Peace.